you're all minorities, you're in Glee Club. Welcome to the Sunday Movie Marathon. I'm Max. I'm Chris. I'm Sue Sylvester. It's been ages. It's been two weeks. It does. It feels longer than that. It feels like it's been ages. It feels like it's been like (laughs) half a year. (laughs) Well, we didn't do like a marathon, but this is the first time we're seeing each other and all, we're all together for like the first time since like before that episode even came out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, coming up f- probably like three weeks now. It's been so long. <laughs> How did we survive? How did we go? Yeah. I, I, cause Hello, Darcy man. went away for like a week or whatever. And, and then I saw you for like two seconds. <laughs> and then I went away for a week. <laughs> I still have like this huge bruise from like where I fell over. You fell over? Oh yeah. And when you know <laughs> Darcy went to get me some money out uh, for um, my trip to Italy. So I came over here and when I knocked on the door, I heard like a massive crash and just, ow! <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing though. I was just like, <laughs> Max opened the door and I was like, no, I've got to get up. <laughs> I can't lay down it. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. But yeah, yeah, this bruise like won't go away. It's like yeah, it, it is pretty fucked. It looks it, it looks awful. worse than it does better for some reason. It's been a week. Yeah, it's still there. It's, it's been like, more than a week. It looks like its own like nebula. It's like proper like yellowy and green and pink and mm-hmm. it's mad. But it was a good reminder of a stupid. I don't even know what happened. I think I, I, think I just like missed my foot in. Up yeah, at the top there's there. a step there. I know. I was, like, <laughs> I was just so excited to get this. Out. I got euros. Yeah. And they're just smack. <laughs> well, it was not in vain because I used them. Well, I, I'm oh. I'm glad that yeah, I'm glad <laughs> that this bruise was worthy of something. For the most part, yeah, I used yeah. them. Um, we talked a few episodes back that I was going to Italy, mm-hmm. and I went, and now I'm back, and um, I thought I was more tanned than I. Do am, you know what? I'm not I'm gonna not... lie, I'm a little bit disappointed. I thought you'd be a lot more like golden. Well, it wasn't that sunny. It was very warm. It was like that's sad. So warm, like you get off the plane, you're like you think you think it's warm here, but you get off the plane in Italy, and it's like Jesus Christ. Yeah, don't, don't they have like that rush of heat? I remember that when I went to Florence. The mm-hmm. second you get off the plane, you get like this. It's almost like a wham of hot. You know when you open the oven and you get a wham of hot yeah. air. It's like that. <laughs> it's disgusting. But I thought it'd be different um, now because that was a while ago. But apparently, it's pretty hot. Now. Yeah, it was a good time. Um, and everyone telling me, oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be an amazing time. You're going to have so much fun. And I don't know if I'd say, I don't know if fun is the word. I don't is know. because you went on your own? I or? went on my own, yeah. So it was like, for the first half of it, I was incredibly anxious because I was scared oh, of fucking things up and uh, getting uh, stranded or whatever and missing a connection that's fair or enough. something. Uh, getting lost in a different country. That's pretty daunting. So, but um, apparently I managed to do it all and I was fine and I managed to... Get all of my connections on time and took myself to Venice one day um, with no real uh, side effects, I guess, apart mm. from the impact to my wallet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that all went quite smoothly, I think, and um, I would never do it again, don't think. What, to Italy or, or travelling by yourself or what? Both? I don't know, it's, maybe it's too fresh right now, but I think probably I wouldn't go away on my own again because it gets to a point. Because I, I, I went... For five days, I think I stayed maybe about a day too late. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So the oh, last day yeah. I was sort of just like wandering around. I'm like, I've been here, I've been here, um, which is not really what I want to be thinking about. I went to a couple of new places, but it was almost like once I'd gone to Venice and that was 50 euros, I was like, well, I can't then take myself to other places. I have to stay in Verona. And Verona is really nice. But once mm. you've seen it, you've seen it, I think. And there's like, there's a few museums. I mean, it's really, it's a beautiful place. Um, so I was never like loath to be there at all. <laughs> but as imagine? soon as I like got over the fact that um, I didn't know what I was doing and that I didn't know how to get a bus or how to navigate, once I'd like figured that out, I was like, I bypassed the stage where I was like, this is so exciting now. I was just like, now I'm just like here. Yeah. And I like, didn't want to like tell anyone that I do. I don't think I had like as much fun as I thought everybody else thought I should have. I don't yeah. know. I, I don't necessarily think that you were going to have a blast by yourself in a country mm-hmm. that you know you're not fluent in Italian. You don't know anyone. I don't. I no, don't know how yeah. much fun can you really have by yourself in a yeah? Country I just sort of wanted that, to like wander yeah. around and see things and see the sights. Yeah, like it was I, good for that. It was really good for that. Like I think it's pretty cool. Like, but um, I know 
my sister, she um she did a trip by herself and she had a blast, but she went to New York, you yeah. see. So it like I'm mm-hmm. not saying that, you know, you need to go to an English speaking country, but sometimes I think That's that helps. That's the only way I do it on my yeah, own. Yeah, I, I think, think it helps a lot. I was she speaking had a good time to um, well. my friend Alex on Saturday about you going away and he was like, Oh, good on him. Like mm-hmm. I think everyone should go away by themselves because you really like learn who you are and like how you cope in these situations and shit. He said it was like a really important, like growing, like experience for him. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. far I would go personally if I was traveling by myself. I mean, I travel by myself to a lot of things by myself all the time, but I mean, like outside of the UK, mm-hmm. I don't know how far I'd actually go. I'm yeah. probably talking Spain. Like, I'm I'm not talking very far at all. I don't think Spain would be good. Yeah, it's um, I speak a bit of Italian. So I wasn't like completely out of my ass there, which is which is um, good because you want to know at least the basics, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that was all right. I think I agree with that. Like you got to do it like once at least. I as much as I I would say, I don't, I'm not like rushing back to have a solo holiday on my own. <laughs> um, I would I do not regret it in the slightest. It was like mm-hmm. such no. a great time. Um, I don't know if like, it taught me who I was. <laughs> I was amazed that nothing went wrong really. <laughs> Maybe that's that's, that's really you. where I was like, yeah. maybe I'm like, <laughs> am I like a proper adult? <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's where I was like, yeah, maybe I can sort of do these things on my own now. Where I've never done that kind of thing. Maybe before. that's that's what that meant. Like maybe. Yeah, but it was maybe like you go away and you you want you, know you, you want can like, do it. Yeah. A, a sort of shift to happen from when you get from the UK into Italy mm-hmm. or from Italy into the UK again, like a mental sort of switch that goes oh i'm here now or there's some sort of relief that happens or some sort of release or some something like switches on yeah but there was nothing like that at all did you not feel better when you came when you came back though not it not in terms no. of like i, don't know, I felt being relieved here, but yeah I, was, you like... I had a bed yeah <laughs> that's it that's literally it i, I oh, didn't okay, so I, yeah i was thinking like what's wrong with me um it was like <laughs> uh well, well like i got on the plane it was a i had to wait like five hours at the airport yeah, that. Um, so I waited there, got the plane at about three p.m., got to the UK at four-ish, and then my coach was at uh, seven or something. So yeah, and then I, I waited at the yes, waited at Stansted Airport, got the coach, um, got the connection from Victoria, mm-hmm. and then when I got home, I just I didn't feel different at all. I didn't feel relief. I didn't feel anything. I just Did you thought, feel like you even went because that happens to me a lot. Like I'll go somewhere and I'll come hmm. back and I feel like I almost like never went at all i definitely went but it's like it's the <laughs> same sort of vibe in my mind from like oh, i walked into another room oh yeah <laughs> it's okay, not yeah. like this massive shift oh what well, like, oh, i thought oh hell, thank I'm god now. i'm home i yeah. made it home i was just like okay <laughs> i think you asked me chris like the next day you're like glad to be back i was like i guess so <laughs> I don't know. I didn't feel that sense of like, whoa, thank God for that. That was such a ride. That was so insane. There was nothing like that. It's just, I'm happy to have done it, but I didn't feel any great swell of emotion, I don't think. No. I don't know I mean, if that's yeah. normal. I don't know. It's maybe it's. Yeah, who knows? Well, maybe it's one of those things like in a few months' time it will like suddenly hit you. Yeah. If I actually did that. did that. Yeah. It is, it's insane in concept to me, but I can't be like, whoa, like I felt that in my fucking spine. <laughs> Well, like may, may, well, the thing is, maybe you won't, but at least you'll have the the knowledge in your mind that you have done it. Because mm-hmm. maybe it is something that people should do. <laughs> Probably not me, but <laughs> yeah. other people, mm. for sure. Yeah, I'd really like to do something like that, but I could only go to English-speaking countries because I think I'd get too overwhelmed and freaked out. Yeah, there was, there was like a lot of me judging whether I should go out for a meal because I'd have to like speak to people to do that. Um, so I thought like sometimes I'd like stood on the edge of a restaurant, willing myself to go in and I have to like <laughs> talk to a waiter. <laughs> they could all speak English as well, but it's yeah. just like it, when you're in a foreign country and like, w- as I speak only a s- slight bit of Italian, if I'm like speaking Italian to them, I get in this space where I'm like, I'm not speaking Italian well enough for them. But also if I speak English to them, they think I'm a fucking tourist. And like an idiot because I don't know how to speak Italian. Yeah, I think, <laughs> so I don't. There's like this yeah. great divide. That was kind of what it was like when we all went to like Valencia. My mum was like speaking phrases in Spanish because she's actually like learning Spanish. Cause she's, I'm not saying she's fluent, but she knows mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. And like I'd always be like, Mom, I want to get this over here, and she's like, Okay, let me just consult the uh, <laughs> the guidebook or whatever. 
and she'll be like all the shit for me so yeah i felt like i was you know when you go around with like a with like a guide or something like my mum was basically the person translating yeah. everything mm. for us because i was like i don't know what this says yeah we were considering <laughs> doing tokyo for a honeymoon and i was thinking of trying to learn some basic J- japanese for that it mm-hmm. probably would be good because apparently like i not, don't think no anyone one speaks really english speaks over english, there no. no and i was like oh like you know, you've got the basic Google Translator, but how awful yeah. would that be trying to like do that? No, because, that's hardcore. Yeah, because uh, when I was completely working, completely destroy me. When I was working at Gunwharf, we uh, that's how a lot of people used to communicate with us. Was like they talk yeah. into their phones yeah. and they get Google Translate and show it to me, and I'd be like, Yeah, I'd get oh. that a lot when I was in retail. Yeah, I mean, I I don't want to be that person to do that, but also apparently, like um, you know, like Japanese and all those other kind of languages, because some of the words sound the same, you you probably say something like your mum's a crocodile or something yeah. instead of saying what you actually want to say. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know if um, if there's a remedy for that, but there's time to learn, I suppose. If that's what you want to do, Chris. Yeah, get up Duolingo. Yeah, oh, I've been yeah. doing Duolingo on, in Italian for <laughs> maybe two years now, every day for two yeah. years, but nice. I don't dedicate as much time to it as no. you really need to get like really fluent. I'm just like, as long as I get that day streak, I get like, two minutes in there and I'm fine. Yeah, yeah I like- did it for like two months in French. I can't say a single phrase or anything yeah because ain't like yeah. the owl and he like really passive aggressive he's like come yeah. back to the me owl. <laughs> or I'll come the eat owl, your family me out. Yeah. the owl does freak you me out you've seen those videos where like the duolingo <laughs> owl is like uh, running around like through a, through a building and chasing yeah. people <laughs> Like he is actually terrifying, and like um, they obviously they have like their own TikTok because you know companies mm-hmm. got to capitalize, and like the shit that they make that bird do, I was just like, nah, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> he freaks me out. Speaking of terrifying, I, when I went to Venice, it was like because I'd seen the movie Don't Look Now, and that's what oh, yeah. like, it's a horror movie in Venice, and I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> Absolutely and when you not. go like deep enough in there, or like go away from the the main sort of crowds and then the shops, it is <laughs> freaky, man. Yeah, I think you sent me a picture, and also I'm pretty sure that that's an actual location in that movie. Is it yeah. like back alley esque? It's really yeah, back alley esque. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. Yeah, that's. I <laughs> sent a picture of the, of the little dwarf in yeah. that movie to Chris. <laughs> it's like, if I see this bitch, I'm pushing her into the canal. <laughs> yeah, that picture you sent of me, I was like, that's like, I'm pretty sure they're like running there when he's chasing after her at the end of that movie. Absolutely yeah, yeah. Not. It is. Yeah, it's, it's like that. It's not like a scary. Uh, city. It's um, it's really lovely. Um, <laughs> but you know, you go further in, and you're like, Jesus. This is, and it was like raining as well, so it was kind of dark and oh. weird stuff. When like you see like a Aspect. a figure dart across in one alley, and you're like, what the, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Absolutely no, no way. <laughs> I think I sent a few videos, but I got like loads of videos. I didn't realize like I I took a a, a very very few. Very few photos, but a lot of videos. Yeah, there, so you might have to like collate them into like some sort of Instagram post. Oh yeah, yes, make them into a reel, darling. I that's what I, I, can't that's what I get that, told all the time. Make a no, reel. Just, and I'm like, that's a lot. I just want to like put the phone in front of people's face and be like, then I went there and then I went to this place. That is such a like a boomer thing nan. to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to join Fred's, upload them all on there. What? You not heard Fred. about Fred's? It's the Fred new too. um. Mark Zuckerberg like oh, metaverse app. I've There's heard basically about just their version of Twitter. Oh yeah, I've heard about this. Everyone's posting like yeah, I'm on Red Day. Oh, what the friggin' hell I is that? I downloaded it. It's be? literally like identical to Twitter, but like with the Instagram layout. Mm. Oh, that sounds vile. Yeah, I don't use Twitter, so I don't either. I, I don't really care. I managed to cleanse myself. Yeah. It's just of another the one, isn't it? It's just another fucking one. Yeah. It's like streaming services all over again. Great. Yeah. Zuckerberg, you're about six years old. Yeah, I downloaded late, it. I was like, oh, I'll have a play with this. And I went on it for like five minutes. I was like, there's nothing on this that makes it like what, justifiable. Different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is just all shit on other networks. It's just got a new name. Yeah, I've said it. I've said it before. I said it a hundred times. They're all the same app. Yeah. They're they all are, the same. Yeah. Just different colors. <laughs> Today, I want to go on the fucking red app. Today, I want to go on the blue app. It's like, yeah, okay, great. <laughs> They're all the same, god damn it. But yeah, Italy, good, good stuff. Mm. Right. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> we got some movies to talk about, no, unless we want to talk about other bullshit. What movies do we have to talk about? Um, the, you know, some things. Yeah. Oh, um, the two new ones. I can yeah. only think of one in my head now. We all got our tickets to uh, 
Oppenheimer and Barbie? Uh, not yeah. <laughs> no, do you know what we were? Um, we are going to. Yeah. We were yeah. in bed the other night, and I was me? like, "Yeah, yes. yeah." We were looking for you, yeah. right? We were like yeah. on the view sent, thing yeah, going. The, uh, oh look, is <clears> that I booked Max's my double seat? bill, so yeah, you. Yeah, I've sent you the seats because there's like this lonely seat like, in one of the rows, mm-hmm. and I was like, "That must be Max. We must book." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, today at work, my manager was like, "Oh, I'm really looking forward to that Barbie movie," and I was like, Barbie "Yeah, we're, we're doing the Barbie Oppenheimer double bill." And she was like, fuck off. Barbie so, She was like, I'm so jealous. I, I don't yeah. feel like it. I keep saying it. I keep going, I really don't think I should do the Barbie Heimer marathon. I don't think I should do it because I don't think I could do it. And Chris is just like, oh, I'll just do an edible before you go to Barbie. It'll be all right. And I was like, what? Perfect film to do it to as well. Well, yeah, I mean, it is the big <laughs> meme, right? We're doing a double bill of uh, Oppenheimer it's and Barbie. And you have to again, see uh, Oppenheimer first and then Barbie yeah. and, uh, to take the edge off of Oppenheimer. And, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, but who the fuck, who is actually going to do that? Like, most of the people who are saying they're going to do it are not going to do it. We'll do it because we're insane. Yeah. And we have oh, the, the data spend. Yeah, that actually it. sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. I know I'll end up doing it just because it's like, do it for the pod, hashtag pod. But uh, do I really yeah. want to do it? Yeah. Do I really yeah. Yeah, for both movies. It's five hours long. And Chris was like, we'll just, take a, we'll just take a break in between. It'll be all right. There I'm is like, a break in between, I think. Yeah, like a half hour. Yeah. Fuck off, like half hours long enough for me. Yeah, half hour, take a piss, get a bagel, you back in. And obviously you got uh, the trailers as well, so that's more like all right, I'll just I'll just pop an another Zena date in that time. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Go for it, yeah. I should put my ticket for Mission Impossible 7 Part 1. Oh, fuck oh, yeah. off. No, you didn't. <laughs> fuck off. What do you mean, no, I didn't. Yeah, of course I did. That's going to be great. Oh, fuck off. That's a, no. I can't wait what to hear, hear about What do you mean? No, absolutely not. Those are good movies. Um, Didn't you see Mission Impossible Fallout? No. Did you not? Oh, it's awesome. I, it's I, awesome. I didn't watch uh, Rogue Nation, is it? No, you well? don't need to watch Rogue Nation. I haven't watched that either. No, no you just need to watch um Fallout. Fallout's the only good one. Well, it's not the only good. It's, it's the best one. Okay, I'll, I, n- it's not that. As, seen, as far as like um, solid action movies go, I think that's like one of the top tier ones. Yeah, I've not seen any since Ghost Protocol, so I no. don't really remember. I only any know of them. one of them, and it had Simon Pegg in it. And I don't know what one that even was. They, they've all got Simon Pegg in it. Yeah, from, like, I think the all fourth of them. one. Yeah, oh, from uh, Ghost Protocol. Don't know, I mate. Actually, mm. no, I think it's the third one. I think he shows up. Yeah, in. it's not like that. I don't remember the first, second, or third one like at all. Mm. No, really, I remember Ghost Protocol because he's like on the. Like yeah, a shot yeah. or something. He's like on a window. Yeah, oh, I think cool. it was, I the, I think it was the fourth one then. <laughs> the third one's got um, Philip Seymour Hoffman as the oh, villain. Yeah, yeah. Hero. <laughs> yeah. That sucked. Resting. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember Rogue Nation like at all. I forget which one I saw in the cinema. It was one of them. I got like dragged along to the cinema because somebody like wanted it to be like a double date, but like, oh like fuck, God, dude, Max, come with me. Because to... like, I don't want to be here with um, just my friend who's like seeing this boy who it might turn out to be a psycho. <laughs> Oh, fine, I'll come and see Ghost Protocol or something. Oh, God. I <laughs> yeah, don't really remember that much about okay. it. I don't know, if Chris did that to me, I'd be like, let me know how it is. Say, Mission send Impossible, me a, let's send go. Me a postcard. Dead Reckoning Part 1. <laughs> Ow. Part 1. I, mean, I think they'll probably do that, and then the next one, and then they'll be over forever. Well, Tom Cruise has said he wants to do loads more. <laughs> well, he won't. That man could keep going forever, though. He There's something... Inherently inhuman mm-hmm. about this man. No, I just want I just want him to do this one and then part two and then that's it, please. Could you imagine Thanks, if they Tom. just did part one and just ne- never released part two? That yeah. would be amazing. Not that, I, not that I don't think it's going to be like any subsequent movies would be good, but it's just like when when does it end? When do you allow these franchises to end? That's yeah. the point. They just they don't do that. It's always just... Mission Impossible. It doesn't have a story. You're not in it for the fucking story. I can't yeah, the thing like, to do what, what the fuck happens yeah, in any so of those movies. I don't know. Fast and Furious movies. They're at ten now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought they were gonna stop when um when Paul died, but they oh, just yeah. they, you know, they just it's fucking get like that bad boy going. Four or five more since then. They did not need to do that, but well, that's neither about here nor there. To be franchises honest, franchises that they will not let die. Chris saw a movie that oh, came yeah. out very recently. Yeah, I saw um the new Indiana Jones. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Do you know what? The Dial of Destiny. Yeah. I'm, mate. I'm so glad that I wasn't around for this one. I was living it up in the land of Lindhurst, so I didn't have to worry about this movie coming back to bite me in the ass. Like, Darcy, you're not doing anything today, are you? Oh, actually, uh, (laughs) I'm dust. (laughs) I'm gone. I like that. Living it up in the land of Lindhurst. Yeah, Mm. I like that. (laughs) It's a cool place. It's just in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I think this this the only one. Not directed by Steven Spielberg. They got yeah. uh, James Mangold in, instead. Who's James Mangold? He, he did, did. Uh, the Wolverine and Logan. 
Yeah, and some oh. other ones. Some, okay. others. some other less cool, impor- unimportant movies. Like Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Is it as great as everyone says? Yeah, please yeah, tell sure. us more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Look, it was like... <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> well, it's getting like really, really like polarising reviews from what I've seen. People are either like loving it or hating it, and I, I don't really feel either. Yeah. I kind of feel the exact same way I feel about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, where I think a lot of it is really boring. There's some good mm. ideas and there's a lot of like really shit stuff in it. Yeah. And this is basically the exact same as that. There's like a few bits where I'm, I really enjoy what they're doing. Um, I kind of like the arc they take Indiana Jones on, like the emotional arc that he has, like kind of going off the fourth movie. And he's like a bit too old to be having an emotional arc now. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> You're too old to have emotional yeah. arcs anymore, Harrison. <laughs> Give it up. You should like, have had one about two movies ago. His whole <laughs> like arc is about his wife like is leaving him because he's like since his son died, he's become like a shell of a person. Ouch. Um, wow, well, his wife sounds and like it's a kind bitch. of a, the films are ultimately about him rediscovering himself and becoming who he is. Okay. And like his wife like seeing that and coming back at the end. Oh, okay. Um, wow, she's only in it for the I'm good I'm not going to lie, man. Yeah. That sounds like shit. She sounds mean. That I sounds don't like her. Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound interesting at all. And like the whole film is about like he teams up with um, what, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, um, mm-hmm. who's his goddaughter. They're trying to get this dial. Um, yeah, well, no, no, no. Well, hold on, hold on. Let's circle back a second. What do you mean his goddaughter? His goddaughter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there any really context to that though? Like, d- it's a very odd like yeah, thread, like, isn't it? You are my goddaughter, and you will come with me on this. It's not like even like like you're, no, so you're she, my like, nephew or my, just turn my niece. Up, yeah, or... so he's a obviously he's a professor in all the other movies. He's still a professor. He's retiring, um, okay. and she's like not seen him in years. She comes to him and's like, "We need to go find find this dial. Let's go on one last adventure." So this dial <laughs> is like. <laughs> It's the Some mummy free. ancient fruit. thing created in ancient Rome, which can possibly um, open up like rifts in time, and they can like travel through time. Stop what? it! What? So what are you trying talking to get it, about? You're at the making same it time, up. Mads Mikkelsen's trying to get it. Oh yeah. With, um, oh, what sexy All his name? Nazi pals. He's an ex-Nazi. Uh huh. He's um, less sexy now. So yeah, that's that's the film. Like. It's like a race who's going to get the piece of the dial first. You sound like you're making this up. Or you just make it like you're just telling no, this as no, we this go is along. The plot of the movie. Because we haven't seen it, so we don't know if you're lying. It sounds or like not. the plot of every fucking Indiana Jones movie. It also it's sounds like, like the plot to that fat of the fucking what's that Thanos for end game or whatever the other yeah. one was. Infinity War. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's yeah, the game. stone. Yeah, yeah. the stone of all the their stone. bad guy gets the stone. <laughs> I just I found it quite strange because I remember like the reason why everyone hates the fourth one is because it's got like aliens in it. And they try to well yeah that too, <laughs> but they try and make it into like this sci-fi thing. Whereas a lot yeah. of people love like it's much more like adventure, oh, like mythical like? sort of stuff they're tackling. Okay, sure. But people seem to be okay with the fact that time travel is like a thing in this movie which that I don't really understand. That threw me for a loop, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, same. I don't understand that. that but like, that I was quite enjoying the movie. Um, so it was like just a fun little action movie mm-hmm. um, and then when they introduced like the whole time travel element and that that's what the dial is it's like a thing to help them travel through time. I feel like the movie just completely lost me at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not surprised. There's a point obviously spoilers, towards the end where they do travel through time. They travel to ancient Rome. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that point, I was actually, if I wasn't watching it with someone, I think I would have actually walked out. <laughs> it pissed me off so <laughs> much. I was like, what the absolute fuck Did is they that? go anywhere else? Or was it just no, like... No, it's just there. They only go to ancient Rome. What's the point? What is the point? Was there, a, was there like a purpose to that? Was, was it setting up So they something? go to like... <laughs> they go to this like inventor guy in ancient Rome who okay. invented it. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, is that it? That's, yeah. that's the whole thing. Okay. They go to like when he's inventing it. So the oh, whole God. thing is based around this dial that transports you through time and they only use it once at the end of the movie. Well, I think the whole idea is it can only go to that date they go to or back to present time for some reason. That's like the worst. That, like, it's what's... like that episode of The Simpsons. Yeah. Where Homer goes back in time to the dinosaurs and he squishes a bug and then he goes back and Flanders is in charge. This, yeah, that's yeah, this, kind of a 
I wouldn't say a similar thing yeah, I'm in this, but there's like a bit where Indiana Jones is like, I want to stay here. I don't want to go back. My life is shit. This is all I've ever wanted well, so was he to wants see to history. Stay in the ancient. Roman yeah, he's like, time. I want to stay in ancient Rome. Well, you this to, like, is like piss everything. In a cup. And what Phoebe Waller Bridge is like, no, you can't do that because you're going to completely fuck up time if you do that. So let him. Yeah. And it, it's not our timeline. He's fucking up. Instead, she knocks him out and tricks him into <laughs> going home. <laughs> How's he going to fuck up time anyway? He's got like, like he's got ten good years left in him, Harrison. <laughs> What's he gonna do that? How much time can he fuck up in those ten years in ancient Rome? He's no. not gonna do much. He's a fucking archaeologist. Yeah. You know? Um but yeah, it has a lot of the similar issues I had with the last one where like, the goofy. things I love about the first three are like all the practical effects and everything and how um because it is all practical, it actually feels real and like all the action scenes you actually get invested in it because it's like that's actually happening. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's so obviously just all computer generated that it's really hard to get invested into yeah. that sort of thing like it's hard to be excited by watching harrison ford ride a, a horse through the new york underground like <laughs> system well it's when like, it's like or old yeah the times? subways obviously that? old like 1960s subways but he's doing yeah. that for some reason what the fuck and it's hard to get invested wow. in that when it's like so obviously not real yeah, I think like the first twenty minutes as well was like set in. I think it's like set around the time of the first movie, so it's like okay. Basically, they de-aged him, um, and it is pretty janky looking. Mm-hmm. I think they show it in the trailer actually. Yeah, because I, I I remember turning to him and going, he aged him. Yeah, and like for a good chunk of the film. Yeah, like as the well. first twenty <laughs> minutes, which is probably the best bit of the movie to be honest. Yeah. although the effects aren't that great. Um, but Harrison Ford seemed to be having a good time making it. Good. I think everyone seemed to be having like an absolute blast. Like yeah. Mads Mikkelsen's really good in it because he is like going really over the top well, and having also, such a good time. He's always good. All, yeah, he is always Mads good. Yeah. It, so. um, but yeah, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. All right. A bit too long. Very yeah. stupid. Um, I think it might be slightly better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but Ooh. maybe not by much. That's, right. not, that's not the yeah. highest of praises. No, is it, it doesn't hold a candle to. Especially the first and third one, which I really love. Um, yeah. So I think I'd give it like five out of ten. That's fair enough. Yeah. The end of Jones. We can, we can settle for average, yeah. I think. Why, James Mangold? Why Could did have you made do it this? The next Logan. Yeah. It's also really obvious it's not directed by Steven Spielberg. Mm hmm. Like, oh, they, yeah. like his, um, it's definitely someone trying to imitate his style. And it just yeah. doesn't really work oh, that's as well. I, I think, think really Mangold, I think James Van Gogh has a sort of a style. I yeah. guess maybe yeah, but when you're already It's not as obvious as Spielberg. I guess but... you've got to, when you're like continuing on an already established franchise, I guess you want to keep it to a certain <clears throat> uh Yeah, way, I think you I really suppose. needed Spielberg to add his yeah. touch to it. Mm. Think they're gonna do another one? No. I God. hope not. He's too. I think. I think. Uh, Sweet Ford is too old. Yeah, he is way now, too old. He? he was too old for the fourth one. Everyone mm. said that. To be fair. Yeah, I did like in this one that there's less jokes about his age. It's less oh, obvious right. that he is like a thousand years old <laughs> than it is in the last one. Um, How's yeah. that? He said. But I think did it's just, just because the, it's much more like CGI heavy. Whereas I think he did pretty much all his stunts in the fourth one. I oh, mean, yeah. I respect that. To be fair. Now he just wants to like sit in a chair and not do much. Yeah, I think he still did a lot of his stunts in this, but obviously he's him? quite limited on what he can actually do because mm. of his age. But yeah. yeah, I don't think they'll do another one. I think his story was kind of wrapped up. Oh, I'm sure it made a lot of money. No. No, oh. apparently, yeah, apparently it didn't do all that well. No, it's not doing very well at all. <laughs> I'm not surprised though, <laughs> Tripitard. I think Disney shot himself in the foot by premiering it at a can. Yeah. Because, like, the initial reception from Cannes was so negative. What made but them think... But I think, think... that's because it's, like, completely the wrong audience Yeah, for what it. made them <laughs> think that going to Cannes was a good idea? Did they, do they even know yeah. what that is? It's like Cannes, <laughs> like, all the, like, pretentious film people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's where all the wankers like, go. Like, you don't put a blockbuster movie there because <laughs> they're the going to hate it. Yeah, yeah it has was... to be a very specific type. Yeah, that yeah, was stupid. Think, yeah. yeah, they just, like, blanket, just, like, released it into the cinemas. I'm sure a lot more people would have gone. Yeah, that was silly. Silly, silly, silly. I wouldn't have gone, but, you know, Tom I'm not the have. biggest fan yeah, of Yeah, I think in today's day and age, that, that word of mouth, that, like, reception online, that does have a big impact on these sort of things. Yeah. Well, also, you've got, you got to market <laughs> yeah. it well as well. If I'm getting de-aged Ford in my uh, trailers, I'm not going to go and see it. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know if they can really do de aging super well yet. No, so it's still not see there. it done like really very well. Yeah, I mean, it's I, been done I'm not well, mad, but yeah. only when it's used very subtly, mm. like um, like the intro for Guardians of the Galaxy two that uses it quite well. Yeah, but it's yeah. only in there for like two seconds. Yeah, no, you can't do like an Irish man. No, oh, a <laughs> whole no, three hour yet. epic we're not, of we're not de aged. It's not worth it. Just be old. Yeah, just fine. be old. Just be God. old. It's fine. It's fine to be old. We know you guys aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> Better even. Mm. Okay, next movie is one that came out. We were all like, woo, woo. Let's go see this one. It's Asteroid City. Yeah. Auteur. Uh, Wes Anderson. We're all big fans. And we saw this movie and we thought, hmm, let's talk about it. It's about... Uh, they go to Asteroid City. There's like a, just different groups of people go to this place. Uh, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's um, it's like a film within a film. It's like a play within a a play, a within, play a within a play within a yeah. film. Um, Meta. Just like yeah, yeah. It's like I don't really know. I, I have yeah. I, it's like a play um within a old documentary about the making of the play. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it, it, yeah, it's very uh, meta. Yeah, it, it's it's confusing. <laughs> He's back, baby. It's our boy. He's back after a French dispatch, which was um not framed well to my recollection. Um, but this one was, so they got that right at least. Thank God. I watched French Dispatch again the other day, and I was like, "Fucking Jesus Christ, this is awesome!" It, all these movies are fucking amazing. I've been on like a binge of Wes Anderson movies I recently. I need to watch it again to be like, fair. Oh, they're all brilliant. Um, but on like a couple, I don't know. I, I still have to watch Life Aquatic again, which I wasn't that big on. But mm. the rest of them, are fucking oh god! Have you oh. seen Bottle Rocket yet? No, not yet. How do I watch that? Uh, we've no, got no. it right here. My criteria. <laughs> I don't think I've actually seen it, unless Chris has showed me it. No, I've not. No, this might be the this only other one I haven't one. seen. It doesn't really feel like a Wes Anderson movie, though. No. All right. It's all right because it's uh, got it's Luke good. and Owen Wilson. Yeah. Therefore, it will feel like a Wes Anderson film by yeah, default. Yeah, it's still a fun movie because mm-hmm. they're in like every movie ever made. Whatever the day we do a Wes Anderson marathon, that'll be good. Don't. That's yeah, actually like the one that I'm the most looking forward to. The, ma- the one that I'll, I'll I'll be like camping outside waiting for it to start unlike the other one like these other marathons I want mm. the Wes Anderson marathon <laughs> we come, if we come up like at the end of this episode and it gives us like another shitty marathon we just do Wes Anderson yeah. one instead I'm happy Hell with yeah. that yeah he's one of my favourites like I've not disliked any of his movies like um, Bottle Rocket and Life Aquatic are probably my least favourites but I still uh-huh. really like them I like Life Aquatic it's um I've only seen it the once though, so I don't really remember it too well. I've seen it twice, I think, because I remember watching it with you, and I remember watching it on my own. I think I streamed it on like a, like one of like a shitty iPad or something, and I was like, look at Bill Murray in this little hat. I can barely see his face. No, Bill Murray's not in this one. No, no, that's a shame. Tom Hanks instead. No, no, it's um, Steve Steve Carell. Carell. He was playing Steve Carell's character and caught COVID, so they had to like recast him like two days before shooting do you know what i actually think Yikes. steve corral was was a okay okay choice yeah, i good. liked him mm-hmm. actually i can't imagine bill murray doing that role now that i've seen steve corral mm. do it, i'm like i don't know because i was thinking about it going imagine Too this line pain. yeah with yeah. bill murray and i thought i don't think it would work as well yeah personally got out of this the first time i was so fucking annoyed and I told Chris as much. I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I was, sure, I was it, so it, mad. It actually ruined my whole weekend. The fact that Max didn't like it because yeah. I was, be- I was be- no joke. I was begging my bosses to let me have the morning off so I could go and watch it in these big fuck off mm-hmm. tents at Glastonbury, right? And Chris was like, oh, I don't know if you're going to want to go and see it now because uh, Max didn't like it. And I was like, well, oh, No, fuck. I didn't say that. I was well, like, I'm not sure what you're going to think well, of it. Well, yeah, and then I went, well, Max I've... wasn't a huge fan, right, but I yeah. really loved it. And then it. I was like, oh, I only get a two-hour break and I work 12-hour shift, so is it worth me going to see it, basically? And everyone was like, nah, nah, you should go when uh, you, you said uh, Chris is going again. And I was like, oh, okay, fuck it. Yeah, I won't go. And now I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I had gone now because I think it would have been a real blast. But it's all right. We live and learn, boys. But yeah, it annoyed me that <laughs> what it, was it, it was like, I don't, I, I wrote like a scathing fucking please, review. At the please, end please do. <laughs> please tell me. I missed it. I must have missed like a it. First impression. I said, I, I won't like read all of it because maybe it's like, I honestly don't think of like because I watched it again and I was like, okay, I don't really think this way anymore. Um, Asteroid City was a frustrating watch in some ways. I think Wes Anderson's style of filmmaking is getting to me on a level I'm starting to not appreciate, and even now, 
as I'll write this to film myself slipping into thinking exactly what people who detest him think. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to lament over how his characters deliver lines or move as though they've been stripped of their humanity, stapled to a lollipop stick and marched down to deliver <laughs> the same, <laughs> to deliver in the same exact tone and rhythm as every other character, uh, the children. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they kind of do, to be fair. The but... uh, children were the exception in this movie, at least three girls were. Uh, it was from this where I gained the most joy, uh, more and more with each Wes Anderson movie. Uh, uh, he insists on siphoning any level of authentic expression from his characters, and instead we are left with what they are saying as opposed to how they are saying it over a gorgeous backdrop, no, no less. Uh, but uh, um, the repetition of lines such as, I think, as a double line delivery, uh, is utilised a number of times in Asteroid City. And where it is surely supposed to be one of the many quirks of the film, it served only to grace on me. Um, but Ooh. why? Why are they doing it? I come back to this question of why, and I wonder if it's me. I got like, really mad at myself for not liking the movie. Uh, to come out of a movie I was sure would be brilliant, to be overcome by annoyance is a great disappointment. Um, furthermore, to hear from a friend that they thought it was amazing in the best movie of the year. <laughs> 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 it wasn't until the third act that everything within the play... Uh, the use of black and white to show the real world just clicked and every, it revealed a great understanding to them. What am I missing? Truly, I got nothing from it. I thought no further about the movie, what the movie was trying to tell me. And in this, I confess, I feel dumbfounded. Um, <laughs> um, the worst part is that I even liked the movie. By, uh, <laughs> by, by all accounts, it's well made and each piece has the hallmark of what drew me to Wes Anderson in the first place. But when it is all put together, it embodies everything that I didn't know upsets me about his style of filmmaking. Uh, it is fluid in a mathematically precise way that allows the camera to glide from point A to point B, but it lacks the fluidity in that it is fixed to an axis, unab axis unable to be moved or altered or rendered human. So why does it annoy me in this and not his other movies? Because um, it's only this one. God, how long is this <laughs> it's review? Quite, it's quite scary. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> he's like scrolling now. I want to be able to glean something from what this is trying to say. I would rather not see it as a checklist of pieces that need to be moved into place in order to see the movie fit into a box. If it wanted to fit into a box, um, even now, I have no interpretations. The desire to have felt something more intimate than aggravation is so strong in me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I want no one to explain it to me or tell me their interpretations. <laughs> yeah. I would rather be put back in, in the movie and made to experience it again. Mm. Um, um, but then you did. Yeah, I, I, and I watched yeah, it again did. pretty soon after. And I completely changed my tune and I think it's a masterpiece and I love it. It mm. is incredible, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's definitely a weird one. I don't think it's as um, linear as I would really would have thought it would be because I'm used to Wes Anderson doing like his movies in like a strictly narrative style. Yeah. yeah. And this is very it's much not fluid, that it, kind of thing. It's very much like interpretable and what, what is on the screen is not necessarily exactly what it's about. So I guess that's probably what threw me for a loop the first time I watched it. Yeah. I don't think it's really about what it's about. It's more about what it's trying to tell you. It kind so of I definitely like got like more out of it. It was really, it was yeah, yeah. really bizarre. I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily complaining about that in in terms, but there were parts where I was like, I was almost like laughing at stuff that I thought was like stupid, goofy, and then I was kind of doing that whole that thing where I like put my hands up and I go, eh? and I'm like, why did you just do that? And then I look over at Kai and he's like not doing anything, and I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, just me then. Like, oh, okay, this is weird. And Chris is like, well, I've already seen this, so it don't matter. And me and Kai are just like looking at each other like, what? Mm -hmm. but you I'm, st I'm still that, laughing. Um, yeah, you, you know? guys went to like an exhibition recently, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it was like 110 studios in London. 180. 180, that's it. They had mm. like um, all of the props and costumes that they had there it was that they actually used in the movie. Mm -hmm. They also like brought over some of the like actual sets, like their like rooms that they stayed in, like the motel sort of rooms. Um, yeah, like the vending machines and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that well. big like... Thing, the like the big wall box, of all the vending sick. machines, the mm -hmm. telephone box. Um, the only thing that the really, alien. really, oh, that, <laughs> that, right? No, let me talk about that. Terrified me because you go, you walk, you walk into it, and then there's just like a perspex box with a standard sized alien. Yeah, prop, like a little right? alien and I'm model. Like, oh, okay, that's kind of creepy. And then no fucking word of a light. You look straight across, and there was like a ten foot 
fucking alien like model and i was mm. like jeff goldblum isn't that tall is he <laughs> and chris is like no he's 10 foot tall he it is was, it was absolutely <laughs> he is very ins- tall yeah. was i don't insane. think oh, i remember this woman looking at it and i was like absolutely not like I, i'm like standing there staring at it going i don't know if i want to get any closer and as the woman walks past i went nothing's really scary <laughs> she just starts laughing at me and i'm like it's terrifying but they had like really fun stuff there like obviously like the ufo in the movie mm. but they also had like the green lighting that they used like the actual like big like the light actual lamps poles. And stuff and they were really cool uh, my favorite my favorite thing in there was actually um so you know they have all these scenes where they're like trying to learn about the solar system they had like the chalkboard and then like the books that the kids had written in so yeah. like all the books had yeah. like been hand written with like the planets and shit on them, and it was really they had really the cool. Train set from the opening credits as well, which was quite cool. Oh, and the Road Runner. Yeah, the little Road, road runner. runner. Oh, awesome! They yeah, had like the really screen cute. on the screen was like the end credits where he's dancing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the and there was like um, so they were like playing snippets of the movie, and then they had that time clock thingy above it. Then you know the one that was like changing and moving and stuff that was mm-hmm. pretty cool yeah it was actually a lot of, it was a lot of fun walking through that um it was like I just, like there was this one guy who was there um he he like saw this green light because obviously there's like tons of like these green lamps around he sees one and he just like bolts to the ground and he's like i'm dead someone take a photo and it's just like um you were trying to like, i was trying to take a photo of like this green lamp but the green doesn't come out so like mm. the only way to actually understand how green this lamp was was to actually go and see the lamp because it doesn't come out on camera it's really really like yeah it was really, really cool obviously the props costumes set designs and everything in this movie is like astonishing oh i think God. it's some the of the best in took- many of his oh movies mm. i was like touching things that i'm pretty sure i wasn't supposed to touch <laughs> But there was this, so there's yeah. um there's like a uh, prop in there of um the little like static caravan that um I say caravan you know what I mean like um the home that uh, Scarlett Johansson's in mm-hmm. and this guy actually got up and started walking inside of it and this woman was like fucking like security <laughs> yeah. police the alarms breaching. were going off yeah, as well he was, and he was like, just walking up around up. looking at it like nothing was happening I, oh, the great. thing is I thought about going in there because it, it is um. It's like sort of so you only got free walls, so you can walk into it. But the, normally they have like the little barriers, so you don't walk into it. But this one didn't have one, so this man's just like walking around setting the alarms, and I don't think he even thought it was him that was setting them off. Mm. And this woman literally was like gonna tackle him, and he's she's like get out of this house. Oh, that's great! <laughs> and then we walked past um Brian Cranston's suit, and I said. Chris, you need to breathe in that suit because Brian Cranston has been wearing it. <laughs> and he was like, you know, they probably wash that before they bring it over. And I killed all the fun yeah. that I had for it. It's good to see him in the movie. Yeah, he's really fun in it. I liked him in the movie. A lot of new faces, I think. Yeah. Which, um, I think works very well. Yeah. I even like Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks was I don't actually, usually yeah. like, but he's very good in it. <laughs> you know, as was, the old grandpa. Yeah, I liked um, Maya yeah. Hawke quite a lot as the school teacher. Really yeah. liked her character. She's good. Everybody like knows the assignment. Yeah, they, knows, they know like what. That is so true. Doing. Like I felt like you know when you're watching it and you go, "Yep, that person is definitely that person. That person. That person." Even though you know who you're watching and you know who's going to be in it, because let's be honest, it's a Wes Anderson movie, so you know for the most part Luke Wilson's going to be in it. You know, you, you just know who's going to be in it. You but say they that, all... but he was not in. This. No, he wasn't it. No, but I None mean, none of you... the Wilsons were. No, but you know what I mean. Like you see these people and you go, they're the Wes regulars. Yeah, there, there you go. But, I mean, it was actually it was a bit different because you know you did have people in it that had never yeah, been in had one like of those. Jason things. Schwartzman, but I think he was like pretty much the only big regular, apart from like a couple other people, maybe. Mm-hmm. I did yeah. like him a lot. He's a Got Fun me. guy. He's great. He's so good. Scarlett Johansson, really she was in um, Isle of Dog. Um, as was Brian Cranston. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah, see, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you, you see, you, you, the thing is, you know who they are, but yet somehow you you don't really watch them and go, oh, I'm watching Brian Cranston yeah. do something. It's like, oh, I'm watching mm-hmm. narrator, quote unquote, because yeah, I don't got, think he has um, a name. Guy played Zero in Grand Budapest as well. He's back in it. Yeah, yeah he's like good. Just Adrian just a... Brody. Oh, yeah. Once. Adrian oh, Brody Defoe. and I Edward love Norton, Adrian William Brody. Defoe. Yeah. Do you know They're he... like the only regulars, I think. Those really. two weren't in it enough for me. I don't think. Because yeah. I, I do bloody love, love Brody. them. I do a love lot. him. I watched um, uh, Dodgy Link Limited again as well. And that's that film is actually incredible. It's like, so good. It... That's probably my favourite. I think I actually think it is up there for me. I do like that one a lot. I think it's the first one I ever watched as well, actually. 
it was mm-hmm. like that and then Moonrise Kingdom. I thought it was the other way around, but I remember watching it again on like a shitty little iPod and being like, oh, I like this movie because um, I saw a, you know, you see them gi- um, gift sets on Tumblr and they were like yeah. aesthetically pleasing colour movies and it was like the Darjeeling and I was like, I'm going to fucking watch that, aren't I? And I mm-hmm. watched it and I was like, this is incredible. But you know how it would be. This film's exactly the same. Just an aesthetically nice movie. Mm, so pretty. It's, it's definitely not what I thought it would be about, but then I had... Okay, well, yeah. what I really mean is, going into it, I had no idea what it was going to be about, but it was even less mm-hmm. than yeah. the idea that I had, if that makes sense. Like, I had, like, this vague... Yeah, it's, log. like, not even about what it's about. Yeah, exactly. It's not even yeah. a fathomable thing. You go into it, I think if you haven't seen it and you go and see it, just go into it expecting absolutely nothing, because what you'll mm. think will be not what you get. Yeah. Which in is fine. Sense, maybe it's one to watch again. Yeah, it definitely is yeah, one you need to I, watch I more than I definitely think I'll, I'll watch it again. But I really like these, like being a bit more creative when it comes to like the story side because I think that's somewhere where he's never really experimented. Mm-hmm. Um, he's yeah. always like trying to push visuals and like do some crazy stuff visually but I think he focused a lot more on the story and the writing on yeah, this Yeah, I felt one. like there was quite a lot of like almost like stop motion um, elements which I actually really yeah, like. Yeah, there's a lot. Like with the Road Runner or the Alien, they're both like Yeah, stop there was just like and, bits yeah. and pieces that were like you could tell because it was kind of purposefully janky looking where where you could like see it was happening and I was like, Oh, I like this bit of stop motion that looks really janky because obviously everyone else is in live action. It does kind of uh, it's not subtle is basically what I'm trying to get at. But I liked it a lot actually because I am a bit of a sucker for that kind of thing. Especially mm-hmm. when the alien came right. So the alien's a bit, a bit of a weird one for me because I was like, why is there an alien in this movie? And then the longer the movie went on, I thought, he's kind of cool, but he's kind of creepy. Yeah. Like, I liked where he posed with his, like, little... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the little yeah, thing that he stole. And I'm like, yeah, what a G. I think that was the only time I heard Kai audibly laugh because <laughs> I looked at him and he was like, alien's cool. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. cool. <laughs> it was just really, really bizarre. Why, why is the alien in the movie then, do you think? No idea. I don't yeah. even care, to be honest. I just, I, um, I know, I obviously am going to assume that there was obviously some sort of like rhyme and reason for it. But because of the movie being so like, you know, it's, it's this, it's this play thing that like anything can happen. It's just the imagination of some writer. I'm like, oh, do you know what? An alien could happen. Mm-hmm. It could be a Dallas. It could be a this. Yeah. I do I'm like, okay like the part the where like a, a bunch of mad shit is going on. Jason Schwartzman goes out of the uh, out of the play for a bit. He talks to Adrian Brody, who's the director, and he goes, "Am I doing it right? Am I playing the yeah. character right?" And he's like, "This is like, this is not the point." <laughs> he's just trying to tell him like, "You're doing fine." Just, yeah, that's just probably my favourite bit of the movie. Trust the honest. process. Yeah. Oh, I just, I, I this is why I love Adrian Brody because only he could deliver such lines of greatness. Although, actually, if there was one thing I thought was really weird, fitting but really weird. Was that chant at the end where they were like, "How do you wake up if you never go to sleep?" or whatever, yeah. whatever. You the, can't whatever wake the, up if you never go to sleep. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, okay. And then it just like it kept going, and it got, it got creepier as it went along. And I was like, "Am I meant to be no, it's asleep?" Awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> it's great. It's so cool. I and love that little it. like uh, conversation he has with Margot Robbie on the balcony. I really loved that as well. Mm-hmm. That was quite sad, but it again felt fitting. But yeah, I think I that's get a little because choked up when watching it. Actually. Chris was taught. It was telling me about like this whole like a uh, theme of grief and all this kind of stuff, mm. and because I hadn't watched it yet, I almost see. I don't think Chris had told Kai, but told Kai after. So I was in this movie going, okay, yeah, I can see all. I can see all this stuff about grief yeah, now. All the metaphors. The only thing I said to Kai was stuff. about how it's like kind of framed as a play and a documentary at the same time. Mm-hmm. And he said he was glad he knew that because it helped him understand it a bit more. Whereas he thinks that if he didn't know that he'd like have no clue what was happening i thought it was yeah. i thought that bit was quite obvious though but maybe that's why you didn't tell me what it what it was because it i don't know like the way, the way it was obviously like laid out was obviously like we're going back and forth between this like no yeah. play thing i mean like i'll be honest like I don't, I, I, if someone was like describe this movie frame by frame i wouldn't be able to do it but there was like a sense of you could follow it yeah there's in, like in, that in massive the that chaos it to it like Sort of towards it's organized the end. Chaos, That's what annoyed it? me most on the first watch, I think, was because it's so out of pocket and just like a bunch of shit is happening. And it goes <laughs> it from like one thing to the next. You're like, okay, what was that? And I like, get out of it. I'm like, what the, I don't, what, what the fuck was that? What was any of that? 
um, and none of it like connected in my mind. So when I went the second time, and it sort of I did get that that big theme of grief and how it feels to like deal with grief and lose someone. You got the character of Jason Jason Schwartzman who's lost his wife. He's telling his kids how like the, their mother is dead. Mm. Um, I was um sitting next to this guy in the cinema, and it was not a packed theater but he decided to sit next to me for some reason is he the guy no he's not the guy but he was a guy (laughs) and he just sort of sat there and laughed a lot and um that annoyed me (laughs) especially because like i cried a fair bit (laughs) on the second time i was watching it because i really thought like yeah it's like it goes like there's so much like anxiety and chaos in there and i think he's clearly trying to say something about you know, there's this imposed quarantine on the area yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt like he was trying to get it something to do with COVID or like that frustration that yeah. people felt during COVID when they couldn't see people and all the chaos that happened when mm. we were taken out of our norms and didn't really know what to do and anything sort of went uh, about uh, we could do the things we couldn't do before or like things that were taken away from us we, we couldn't do. Um, so I think like that whole third act where it gets like really chaotic and like all throughout i think like when there's stuff that like doesn't make sense or like people do things that don't make sense or they're just a bit like off kilter that was more to do with a sense of there's no guidebook for grief we know that it comes in like stages i suppose but it was more about like the emotional side effects of grief and like not knowing what to do when you lose someone and how Mm -hmm nothing really it does feel like you're on stage in a bit it's like we're we're taken out of reality like nothing fucking matters when you lose someone it's like just they're gone it doesn't how do you deal with that there's no there's nothing for it so when you're put into it seems like you're put into a a play within a documentary about a life that used to be um so that's when i started like really crying in the movie was like when it all sort of started hitting home and probably when Adrian Brody told Jason Schwartzman that he was doing fine and he was doing a good job. I was like, for fuck's sake. Mm. <laughs> he was doing a good job. He was just trying his best. Mm. That's what That's I all got we can do. Him. Well, no, actually, I kind of got that from the end, you know? Yeah. They're like, where Tom, <clears throat> where, uh, whatever Tom Hanks' character is called, whatever he is doing. Um, You know, where they're like, oh, we should just like bury her somewhere else. And the kids are like, no. And he's like, okay, I guess we'll do the funeral here. And I was like, oh, no, there's something like bittersweet about that. I don't know. It was like, it was kind of wholesome, but also like really sad. Yeah. When he's like, I don't want to bury my daughter here, but I don't have the energy to fight anymore. Yeah. I was like, I, I don't know why there was something about that scene that was like, it was, sad, it was actually like it my was favorite. It was quite funny. It was actually like yeah, my favorite. I love bit. those girls. I yeah, love they those were great. Kids. They were great. And we're witches. <laughs> we're vampires. And Do they were doing w- spells over their mother's ashes. <laughs> no, no word of a lie. That actually... Rem- so uh, so before, obviously, um, all this, I had spent a week with a four-year-old child who was literally doing that all the time. Like, I'm a princess. I'm a fair. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this. And I was like, oh my God, is that how all children are? Like, yeah. It's like so insane. But in the realm of like a child, it's yeah. almost rational to yeah. do those kinds of... Or like it felt like, you know, you've lost your mother. What can you do? try to do some magic i don't know anything yeah. goes anything fucking go i love the um it's broken up into like this like act type structure or like scene structure where it goes like now you'll see uh scene four to nine and now you'll see yeah, like, like m- scene 10 to 14 um and then at the end it says the rest of the movie will be played relentlessly without a break yeah <laughs> i was like that's exactly that's what it's right you know it's and it, and it does go so fucking hard and the chaos is you know it's, it's it does. a lot to take in i think especially a first time round mm. yeah i yeah i i don't know, I, I i didn't i don't know maybe i didn't um take it all that like hard but i don't know I'm i felt just, like I'm it was it was more there. to do with when i guess when you lose someone life still goes on and that's very hard to process it's like why hasn't everything stopped because this person who i loved is gone yeah. and they can't come back and how is how is everything still going on so to say that the third act will be played relentlessly without a break. It's it's saying now you have to move on. You have to keep going. Mm-hmm. And there was like a lot to do with like you do have to keep going, but it is all worthwhile. And as long you know, as long as anything goes in this sort of realm, you just have to keep going and chalk it up to whatever you can and deal with it however you can. There's no wrong way to deal with these types of uh, emotions, but you do have to keep going. And as soon as I realised that, I start crying. <laughs> <laughs> It's a heavy movie. To be fair. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is his heaviest movie. I think probably as much as I do think get very emotional with movies like the Royal Tenenbaums or mm. uh, 
Dodgy Limited, this this one probably hit the most because it's saying something that you have to interpret. And when you interpret that, if you interpret that in quite the way that I guess I did, um, that, that probably hits a bit harder in oh, terms yeah. of the emotional impact. Yeah, maybe it just depends on it's not telling how you what to feel. Right? Yeah, yeah. So like, it's, it's maybe it's not even about what I'm telling you it's about. It's it's just what I'm thinking it's about. For yeah, me. But it, yeah, but that's like the whole point, isn't it? Like, oh, Darcy didn't take it that hard because she didn't interpret it as this like horrible, heavy grief yeah. movie. I've taken it as a yeah, shit happens, but we must press <laughs> on. But then again, yeah, maybe you <laughs> have another it. experience when you watch it again. No, this maybe. is tr- yeah, maybe but, maybe it's an ever uh, ever changing. Yeah, maybe all uh, maybe all yeah. think about it differently when we see it the time. Like I loved it, absolutely loved it both times. But I'd say I had a kind of different experience both times yeah. watching it. Mm-hmm. Like, I kind of interpreted it a different way. See, see, I, d- I think um, it, while on the subject of like where's as a whole, I feel like every single time I watch a movie again, it actually does change in my mind every time I go and watch it. Mm. Yeah, like, every, every time I watch any one of his movies, I'm like, this has got a completely different experience in, in any movie. Yeah, like, I don't know Even, how, like, I've watched how is that possible? Limited a fair few times. I watched it right before I went on holiday. I was like, this is like a completely different movie to me now. Okay. The same with Royal Ten and Bombs. I was going to say, that. yeah. As soon as I, uh, yeah. bef- just before I left for the coach, I was like, this is completely different. This is recontextualizing everything in my mind now. Mm. He's such a good, like, auteur for that, you know. Yeah. He is one of the great. He is mm-hmm. one great dude. And I hope he got some money from my shower product I bought. <laughs> I am uh, Lush have got a collaboration with Asteroid City, so oh. we went to the Lush in London while we were there, and Darcy got some. <laughs> so some it was jelly. just supposed to be like a UFO, like jelly thing, but I've already like broken it. So it's like it. So it was. So when it came out the pot, it was supposed to land flat, like a like like a UFO. It was like a hexagon shape, and then because they were like, take the whole thing and put it on your body, I was like, Ugh. and then like parts of it were coming off, and now it's like. Half of a UFO and mm. half of a <clears throat> jelly mess sludge reptile looking motherfucker yeah. on the other side. And um, 20 out of 10, I would buy it again just because it smells great. It's really impractical. I would recommend if anyone is down there for the next week and gets anything from the collection, I recommend getting the shower gel. Yeah, nice. Much too difficult to use. I, I, when I was in Italy, it's just side tangent. I, I, was, I showed you guys there was a lush there in Verona, and they were doing like a SpongeBob thing, but they had like um yeah they got SpongeBob, SpongeBob bath bombs. Yeah, and yeah. They had um like the the Patrick bath bomb, but like when he like that yeah, really famous. Yeah. They've got that him, like gasping. They've got that hair as Did well. Did you know when both of the uh, so they have the SpongeBob one and the Patrick one when they both go into the water? You know how they're not wearing pants. Mm-hmm. The pants come out. <gasps> so what? when you put them in the bath, you get a little like. Oh, I got pants in the bath. You get the little bomb. pants. Yeah, it's really oh. weird. I think it's, it's also like just like cardboard, but yeah, you get the little pants. And I was like, I kept saying to Chris, "Oh, I know I've just bought this like jelly bath thing, but like, do you, are you sure you don't want a SpongeBob soap? Are you sure you don't want a SpongeBob soap?" And <laughs> I didn't end up getting a SpongeBob soap, so yeah. pretty disappointed. But but we got a free slushy. And it tasted just like yellow. Yeah, yellow flavour. It was called yellow flavour. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. 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 The Wes Anderson Asteroid City yellow slushy, and it was. Yeah. Pretty and then we got to see nice. um, Royal Tenenbaum's 35mm Prince Charles I've Cinema, never. which was amazing. Yes. Nice. It was so sexy. I was like, surely 35mm can't be that sexy. And then the film starts, and obviously, obviously everything's like aesthetic and then all the little pops and cracks and I was like mm. so um yeah it just it reminds me of going to the cinema as a kid where there's like loads of scratches and like pops and burns and it was so grain sexy. and shit on the screen I don't think I could ever watch it again in a normal capacity because <laughs> I just feel like it peaked you've ruined it obviously like <laughs> it definitely it's not the best way visually to watch the movie but it does I don't add a lot agree. of charm. I thought it was amazing. Of course, it wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't as sharp or detailed because mm-hmm. obviously, like, yeah, the film's like proper grainy, but that's what I liked about it. Mm-hmm. It was like ultra ugly looking, and I was like, oh, this is so good. It was also nice to watch it with like a packed screen where everyone clearly loved the movie and they were laughing at literally every single joke. It was I'm glad so much they fun. were, though, because there were parts where, like, uh, uh, you know, when you laugh and you don't want to be the only one <laughs> laughing, and I was like, please don't be the only one laughing, but everyone else was like having a great time. And even parts where I thought Chris was like going to start blubbing like a baby, I would turn and be like, you can't do this, man. You can't do this. 
And he's like, he does this heavy breathing <laughs> thing. He does, he does this heavy yeah. breathing thing. And I'm like, <laughs> are you going to do it? But he didn't. He actually didn't do it this time. I thought he was going to, but he didn't. No, I shed a lot of tears. Yeah, no, yeah. that I thought that was acceptable. But I, the only reason I, I only reason I do this is because if he starts blubbing, the, the screen's not that big, man. Like yeah. people are gonna start looking at me and thinking yeah. that I've like punched him in the dick or something <laughs> to make him cry. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I can't. It's the bit at the end that always gets me. Where I knew I was like, I turn around and like the garbage truck and like Ben Silla comes out of the back. That always gets me. I literally was like, this don't. <laughs> And when he says, I've had a rough year, Dad, yeah. that oh, always God, kills, kills me. me. Do you know what? That actually really upset me, but I think it was also because um, it was like, you know, uh, ju- just before this dog gets crushed by a car and I was <laughs> like, oh, man. Because I kept going, oh, look at that dog, it's cute. And Chris was like, remember, don't get attached to that <laughs> dog. And I was like, I'm not listening. There's a cute dog on the screen. Yeah, good dog. I don't yeah. ever listen. Should good we part. rate Asteroid City then? We should, yeah. Why not? Rate it out of Buckley. <laughs> No, he's not in it. <laughs> he is in but spirit. Please. Yeah, that's the name Aww, of the dog. No, <laughs> we got to write it out of Jeff Goldblum. I'll take Jeff Goldblum. I was going to say Solar Systems, but I'll take Jeff Goldblum. Sure, big up Jeff. Yeah, he's in there at one point. Terrifying. He is there. Yeah, he is not nine foot tall, but he, he could be. <laughs> That's, you, that's no a terrifying fall. No, honest, honest <laughs> to God, if he was as tall as that alien model, there's wah, no wah. way. There's Just absolutely kill no way. myself work. on the spot. Mate, it was terrifying. <laughs> it was so scary. Uh, yeah, this is like, <laughs> as a, as Max said earlier, this is my favourite movie of the year so far. Fucking love it so, so much. It's like probably one of my favourite Wes Anderson movies already. Um, one I can actually see, like, making its way higher and higher in my ranking the more I watch it. I think there's so much going on. Such a unique, interesting, creative movie. Uh, yeah, easy 10 Jeff Goldblooms out of 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, first time I saw it, gave it a 7. was very annoyed by it. Um, Oof. Second time. Because, yeah, and, and I was begrudgingly giving it a 7 as well. I was like, well, fine, it's like shot really nice. It looks really nice. Whatever. Fuck you. Very pretty, um, yes. Fuck you, I'll give it a 7. Um, but this time, I'll give it a, a 10 Jeff, Jeff Goldblooms out of 10. Uh, 10 for the guy who was sitting next to me as well, who just laughed the whole time. Just, <laughs> he must have found it the like, best oh, movie it, ever. Oh, look at that. What's he doing there? Fuck you. Shut up, man. Be quiet. I'm having an emotional experience. So was he, but of the happy kind. Yeah. Well, not was, the correct kind. He was laughing. Leave me alone. Go sit somewhere else. Yeah, that's pretty annoying to be fair um ever since watching this movie i've had that um freight train start song stuck in my head and it will never leave and i welcome it i actually kept singing it around the whole exhibition and then lo and behold when we get to the end of the exhibition what's playing the bloody freight train song yeah. so um i had a lot of fun with this one i say fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah one, once again one of them. Mm. did i have fun um kind of um i'm gonna give it a nine jeff goldblooms out of ten might go up to 10 on a second watch. Happened with... Actually, no, I didn't say that happened with the Royal Tenement. No, it did. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. no you Ooh, intentionally no, gave it four and a half just to annoy me. <laughs> oh, yeah, because basically after we came out the screening, Chris said, I hope you rate it higher this time. And I was like, oh, was it, was it that low? And then I came out and went, fucking hell, I gave it a three. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> not three out of five, not three out of oh, ten. Right, yeah. But I was like, what the fuck? I fucking hated this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I did, but... um. Take bottle Thank rocket you. with you. It's not my DVD, but I'm giving it away now. <laughs> Give away all of Chris's things. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, it's episode 125. Everyone that ends in a five, we do a show. This week, Darcy has tasked us with a show, a season one of a show to watch. I Introduce did. it for us, if you will. So, um, do you know what? I, I don't even know where to begin with this, so I'm just going to say, I made everybody watch Glee. I thought it would be a great little meme, <laughs> and I had the... Right, and I, know, I know Chris is up there right now making a hell of a lot of noise. Thank you. Um, I'll just speak on behalf of me and Chris when I say I had the best fucking time watching this. It was like the greatest thing I've ever done in my whole life. I think it got to about episode three or four, and I said, this is the best thing I've ever suggested on this podcast, ever. This is the best thing ever. But I kept going, this show's mad goofy, isn't it? Just mad fucking goofy. Every episode. Mad <coughs> goofy. So dumb. This is one that uh, my sister watched back in the day. Yeah, I watched the first two seasons when it was on. 
yeah. and then never watched anything I after watched, that because I got too old, quote unquote. I watched about ninety percent of this season when it was on. Mm-hmm. I had like the DVD, the first volume, so it was like the first half, like the first thirteen episodes. I think until they get to the sectionals. Yeah. Um, and then I watched the rest of it on TV. I think I just got bored and dropped off. Yeah, I watched yeah. it on Sky when it was on its like original run. But yeah, I only watched like the first oh, two seasons or so. I must doing the reruns because I, I was watching on E4. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you know what? I, I'll be honest, it could have been E4. I don't really know, mate. But either way, I watched it with my mum on the original run. And I was like, oh my God. Because you know we're back in your school because it was like 2009, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I was like, this is the greatest show. Because then you go and talk to your friends about it at, the, at lunchtime in the, in, the, in the playground, or at least we did anyway. And I was like, oh my God, Glee, this is the greatest show. And then I got to like high school and went, oh, I don't really want to watch this anymore. So I actually stopped watching it. But I assume it got, I don't know, maybe it stayed the same. Maybe it was really great. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But we're not here to talk about those. We're here to talk about this season in particular, <laughs> which was a bang. Yeah, it's a very bold move to task us with 22 episodes each about 40 minutes long. Okay, right. Yeah, I understand this. And I had actually forgotten how long um, each episode was and the length of the series. I just said, oh, how fucking hilarious would it be to make these boys watch Glee because they might hate it? I was in. I already suggested we watched it before you you said you were going to Yeah, because I was like, oh, I want to watch it. And Chris was like, well, we can't watch it yet because we've got these other things to watch. And I was like, fuck it. I'm picking it for the podcast then because then we have to watch it. Mm. So if I really want to watch something, I'm just going to put it, I'm just going to pick it for the pod to like uh, speed run it so I can watch it quicker. Yeah, that's a good way to do yeah, it. I actually yeah, I actually think it's my only, my only way because <laughs> we're watching about six different shows at the moment and it's quite frustrating actually. Yeah, it's, um, look, I mean, I, I was... I was trepidatious, wait, to say wait, the least. Yeah, were well, you um, hating it? So I, I turned on episode one. I was like, <laughs> all right, let's fucking do this. Like, I got, I got, we got to do this for the podcast. Um, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know. Like, it, I, <laughs> I started watching it and I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> this is completely not what I thought it was going to be at all. I thought it would be like a straight, what, like high kind school of musical, high school. The well, no, no, the like a, just like a straight high school flick type thing. Yeah. Um. Well, like, you know, fair enough. Like, whatever. I, I assume, you know, the girls back in the day, they loved this shit. Um, and I got into, I don't know, maybe halfway. And I was like, this is like, what the fuck is going on? It's just like, it's really weirdly sinister. <laughs> like, a weirdly, yeah, it is. like, the horror <laughs> tones are coming through here. Why is it? Why am I getting horror from Glee? Um, <laughs> Yeah, and and it just it's good. This season is fucking good. Um, I really had a good time with it, and it it kind of flew by. I didn't really. Yeah. There there are some dips. Like, I, don't, I don't know. Episode three is not the best with the fucking Acker fellas bullshit. I hated that. Ah, uh, that was really cringe. That was so cringe. Oh, what where they made that? Um, where Will is I want to sex you up. like boy band. Yeah. Right, that was horrible. Oh, there was also another <laughs> horrible episode that I can't remember off the top of my head, but that was also making me cringe and I wanted to kill myself like the whole episode. Yeah. All that I knew about horrible. Glee was that there was a school shooter episode. It's like, is that in this one? It's not. That, uh, did we say that was like season five or something? Like that. It's quite late. <laughs> we just got to push through <laughs> season five, baby. I'm ready for it. But you still have a lot of crazy shit going on in there. No, but what what I, the fuck? What the fuck is going on no, here? But you got to take it from, uh, if we're being honest, I am, I wasn't convinced at first, but I am now a hundred and fucking seven percent sure this show is a satire show. Yeah, definitely. There is absolutely yeah. no way this it show has to be. is. It has, you know, <laughs> they knew what they were it doing. Obviously, yeah. they, right. they know what they're fucking doing. It can't yeah. be serious. Almost instantly in that first episode, I was like, "Is this like? Are they being ironic? Is this like meant to be making fun of something?" And I was mm-hmm. just viewing it from like that viewpoint. That it is like a satire. It is ironic, and they clearly know what they're doing. And I think about halfway through, I was like. 100% oh, it's certain that I, is what I they were doing. I think what happened was I went, yeah, surely it's got to be. And then my curiosity got the best of me. So I Googled it and it, it, yeah, it basically is. And I was like, well, yeah, because why else would this show be so like damn goofy? Like how can mm-hmm. it be this goofy <clears throat> and be serious? Like surely not. Like it's not, I can't think of any other show that's like this though. Like a show that's so like self-aware of the fact that it's goofy as fuck to the point where yeah. it's like, 
this is mm. amazing. This is 2009. This yeah, was 2009, ahead of its time. Yeah. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> this is like weirdly ahead of its time. Yeah. All like the jokes they're making and all this like stuff that they're referencing. Still I'm like, relevant. You could, yeah, you could do this now. It, it'd still be the same sort of thing. I, don't know, I feel like there's a lot they actually couldn't get away with. No, yeah. no, exactly. You couldn't like. It's too much. For the, oh, the yeah, woke like it's like very like racy in terms of yeah, how it's like tackling like gender and race and stuff. Well, there's also yeah. like loads of like things that like if, if Glee was to air now, it would get cancelled for like being like ableist and yeah. um, all that. I was like, in a wheelchair. <laughs> but the thing is, he's not even in a wheelchair in real life either. No, they so, cast like, the guy who wasn't actually in a wheelchair no. in real life. Like, there's him. that like episode yeah. where there's like a, he has a dream sequence <laughs> oh where he starts walking and dancing. <laughs> I was like, oh, so good. I yeah. remember when that happened, and I looked at Chris and I just thought, sure, because I kept saying, no, I know this show's goofy, but that isn't actually happening, is it? And then, like, we were like, nah. And then it just cuts to him being sad in the wheelchair, and I was like, this shouldn't be uh, funny. Like, so stuff like that good. should not be funny. So good. <laughs> it's so Like, you wouldn't funny. get away with that now, but you just wouldn't be able to laugh at that kind of thing. Or, like, um, they're always making, yeah, they're always making jokes about, like, Mercedes being, like, the token, like, black girl who's like yeah. able to sing and they're like you know all of you should be able to do this kind of thing and it's like <laughs> are you allowed to do in the first that? episode they break it rachel comes on the scene she's like suppose, supposedly she's the best singer there she's yeah. um fucking <laughs> great line she's got two dads and um she shows us a picture of her two dads and she says to this day we still don't know which of my dads is the real one and one of them is black <laughs> Oh my god, that is! I didn't even see that. That's amazing. <laughs> that was really fun. I was I, good. like, yeah, there's just like, yeah, like loads of really like weird things where like they're playing on the fact that yeah, like um, you know, Kurt being gay or um, Rachel being Jewish or mm. all these other like weird fucking things Quinn that you just being like pregnant. Yeah, like things that you yeah. wouldn't get away with doing now. Or I feel like um, do, do you think maybe now, maybe not so much. I, I might be overthinking this a little bit because I haven't seen a quote unquote like high school drama in a long time but you don't really see many like of the teenage pregnancy mm. storylines well, anymore fashion, i think yeah it's it was definitely fashion. a big thing back in my school days yeah. also everyone I don't think was having you couldn't make this show now not because of like the the, the, the racy jokes or whatever but it's like <laughs> all like the content it is more like i don't think there's much of a market for it anymore nobody wants to make like a 22 episode show about kids in a school unless it's like high school musical the musical the series which is basically just glee yeah but yeah, worse. But, yeah, yeah. Glee, glee is so much. Better. But the thing is, <clears> I think what what I love and hate about Glee at the same time is actually sort of like the character dynamics because mm-hmm. some of them are like obviously being a you know satire show, like some of them are like proper goofy, and I'm like this just this just doesn't make any sense. But then my favourites are like obviously like Sue, like Sue is yeah. the best one by far. So oh, she the is the best, best character. But then, like, Jane Lynch fucking kills yeah, it. Yeah, she's I, incredible. I, I kind of love her like uh, relationship with Will, even though I hate mm. Will because Will's. I mean, I feel bad for him, but he's a bit of a wanker, isn't he? Like, he's got this noodle thing going on on top of his barnet, and yeah. he's a bit of a wanker. But like, I feel bad for him because his wife's fucking crazy, and I'm like, oh uh, well. Hilarious. The <laughs> the amount of because this season is so long, just how much they drag out storylines <laughs> could be a bit. Much to cope with at it times. I was forever. like, how fucking long are they gonna? Is like Terry gonna hide the fact that she's not pregnant from Will? A storyline that is fucking batshit, by the way. Yeah, yeah. literally and I the thought, whole like, show's oh, insane. Oh my god, why the what? They're doing this. She's pretending that she's pregnant. <laughs> That's insane. She's they going didn't expect to buy that at the all. cheerleaders' yeah. baby. I actually oh thought that that was something like I made up about the show. <laughs> what that she like, nearly bought a child? Yeah, when I was like, thinking baby. about it before rewatching it, I was like, surely that isn't <laughs> you, something that right, actually happened. Do you know happened. what I also don't understand? Is that when Will obviously finds out about all of this? Oh, so he, good. He like never ever goes to Quinn and is like, "Why the fuck were you going to sell your baby to my wife?" Like none of this ever comes up again. Like to be fair, I, I think he like just understands she's like a scared yeah. teenager. Well, yeah, doesn't but I really mean, know what she's why doing. does it never come up even as like a conversation of being like, "Um, you know, my wife shouldn't have done that, right?" Like you know what I mean? Like it never comes up. Mate, it I mean, I was more up. astonished at the like the. The part where he finds out is, <laughs> is oh one of the God. best parts of this season. Yeah. I thought so he tense. was going to fucking kill her. Yeah, he oh like, my snapped. God. Yeah, the bit like, where he's like, the fucking baby bump kitchen. off of her and he's like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? Oh, And gosh. he gets all up in her face and I'm like, like, you don't breathe. There's like, 
there's like a couple of seconds where you're rooting for Will to actually kill her. And I'm like, yeah. I thought he was going to punch her in the face, like square in the face. <laughs> like, oh my God. I would have enjoyed that. This is a amazing. Lot. Yeah. So some of it is like proper mad. Like, I also didn't realize that um, the whole Kurt Finn saga happened in this season as well. Where, oh, yeah, where Kurt's in love with Finn. Well, it's it's more of that bit where um I remember it like really well. Um, that episode where uh Finn basically tells Kurt that he's a massive fag, quite yeah, quite. Yeah, really. Like, and then his dad yeah. comes down and beats the fucking life out of him. <laughs> decorates his room. Yeah, he's like, get to, this like, faggy lamp out of here. <laughs> to be more comfortable for him, he's like, get this faggy lamp out of here. I'm like, that's so like weird for him as a character. To yeah, like describe all these things as faggy. It also because... didn't feel very like authentic because Finn seems like. Obviously, you can tell he's not very comfortable with Kurt because of mm-hmm. he knows his feelings yeah. towards Finn, basically. But like, I don't think he would have ever have actively called Kurt no. a fag. I know he didn't technically, but yeah. like, I thought it was yeah, I thought it was a little bit like out of pocket. Like, I thought if um, only slightly for me, if uh, Puck had done it, I'd have been like, okay, that makes more sense. I don't but, think like, it was out of pocket at all. I think it was kind of like a big like a lot of things built up to that moment. Yeah, he and had I don't a lot think going it, on. Yeah. I don't think it was just like suddenly just became homophobic. No, I'm not not, necessarily saying that, but I just don't feel like he necessarily was homophobic. I just felt like he was a bit uncomfortable Mm -hmm. with that. I think he just snapped and said something he probably didn't actually mean. I thought what was out of pocket was to hear him describe things as faggy. I was like, whoa, (laughs) using that word. Yeah, no, this is what I mean. This show is one of those shows that you just think, it, it felt almost like brave in a way, but I think that's because we're like so now. Uh, mm. Societally conditioned to like not accept these things that back in two thousand and nine, hearing that would have just been like okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we were all saying it back in the day. Well, it was like nothing. It's just, it's, I don't know. It's just it's just one of those things that was just like oh yeah. It was like mm-hmm. okay, we're gonna go with that one, are we? Okay, but I don't know. I just um I didn't realize it was this far. Um, like not this far. This soon into the show. Like I, all the things that I remember happening in the show have basically now already happened mm-hmm. because I thought maybe that's another thing that um I didn't really pick up on is thinking that because season one is so long, season one is also season two is also season three. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I thought it was a different season. Yeah, maybe you haven't watched any more than this season. Who fucking knows? I guess I'll find out when <laughs> I inevitably when I inevitably uh, carry it on. Let's be honest. It's inevitable. Like Chris was like, oh, we should carry it on. And then what happens? The last episode happened and he goes, all right, enough of that now. And I was like, oh, I'm going to carry on. <laughs> we'll go back to it. You've got to finish Dexter first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to finish All these shows we're recommending yeah. for the podcast. We're still Dexter. watching them. We're to be still fair, watching them. We're not that far off the end of Dexter, to be fair. We're only like, what, six, seven episodes? Yeah, and then maybe? we got the, that newer, newer season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but because that's not Dexter, I'm going to use that as an excuse to put on Glee season two. Yeah, I felt like what annoyed me the most was how everybody could sing super well. That annoyed the shit out of me. No, for some there reason. was yeah. some auto tuning. Like, yeah, there was definitely man. a lot of auto tuning yeah, yeah. in there. But like the the idea that it, all the, all oh, these like, kids so good came in here, no, there was no like auditioning process for it because they literally say like you everybody came in, who everybody who auditioned, who auditioned yeah. can come Got in. It. But like <laughs> they were all really good. Oh, so and, basically, <laughs> someone should have been like terrible. Like should have had a shit, high school terrible. musical montage yeah. moment with some people yeah. being Did shit. It not piss you off as a vocalist, though, Chris. Like, oh, yeah, it pisses me off as a vocalist. I'm like, if people they just launch into these songs, they can do amazing <laughs> fucking yeah. tricks with their vo- vo- vocals. I'm See, like, I have to go through rigorous fucking uh, exercises See, before I even. Uh, attempting to do these no, things. No, what pissed me off more was like people saying, oh yeah, I can sing and then singing and it's like so obviously like fake, like mm. so artificial. They sound like robots. Oh man, what I thought was weird about the show in terms of that kind of thing, because obviously, you know, I'm, I'm no vocalist. I, I, I don't have the same sort of yeah. gripes. But what I thought was really damn goofy was that Will Schuster would just shove down like a, like just like a, just like a tab sheet of the song and be like, this is the song. And they're like, 
oh my god, I love that song. And yeah. then immediately they know they all, all the know. words. They know the they choreography. Have the choreography as well. <laughs> my <laughs> absolute <laughs> favourite thing about it is that 90% of the music is just from that one guy on the oh piano. Oh my god. Chris was like, look, look at the drums coming out of that piano, man. Because <laughs> he's playing the piano, but the drums are playing. <laughs> yeah. Every that time it cut to him and like there was all this music going off and it was literally like, just yeah. him. He, he was a genius. Yeah, what he was, was that? Um, ahead of his time. Yeah, what was that one episode where they were like... They just call him out and yeah, he's just there. He's just, <laughs> he's just he's like they're like oh he's just around he's always around yeah. <laughs> like, is he and, and he's just <laughs> and then he just sits at the piano and he's like that was mad <laughs> that was one of my favorite bits because yeah. i was just like it's so true this man who who the fuck even is he he doesn't even have a name he's just like the guy on the, yeah, piano. the piano guy yeah he does have a name I just oh it. it's so funny there's a fucking great oh, <laughs> episode two is fucking awesome. They, <laughs> they, it really starts off strong and it just keeps fucking going. And in mm. episode two, they do, they try to entice people to the Glee Club. They're like, we need more people to join. So we re- reach sectionals. Mm. Um, so we like try. They're trying to. They do like a performance uh, for the school. And it's supposed to like a really sexy performance because they're all kids. It's it's so cringy. It's like the most sexless, sexless, yeah. sexy performance what, ever. What, I think I know what you're talking about, but I, was it <laughs> yeah, one? Was it was it the one where cool. like we was like you can't do that song, and then they go ahead and do it anyway? Yeah, it's like something about booties. I don't know. <laughs> They're all dressed like really like uh, alluring. It, bit, it was a bit cringe to watch these like oh, it's so quote cringe. unquote like misfits walking around the stage like talking sexy, even though none of them technically have probably ever done it except Quinn. <laughs> I was like, mm, this is a bit weird, isn't it? Like, but then is it cringe? Because I bet back in the day when we were like the same age, we were probably like, hell yeah, look at them rebelling against the no. the sexual no. um, no, barriers. I can't, I can't imagine it. It was it was that cringy. Then, but... It was really really cringy. There were there were a lot of things like that happening in the show that was making me like really uncomfortable. Like the the parts where I was just like. Yeah, a lot of wincy moments. Yeah, there were. And I'm, I loved I'm it. Like, I loved them all. Please stop. <laughs> oh yeah, like um, that yeah, that one episode with um, when Will Will was like trying to like entice Sue. Oh, and, that's and, like, so good. and that whole episode oh, God, is so yeah. uncomfortable. It's so fucking good. It's and so I'm good. Like, this is yeah. amazing because I'm so uncomfortable. I think that was right one of my now. favorite episodes because it was just pure like insanity. Just completely unhinged and crazy the whole episode. Oh, it was it, yeah, it was also like awful. Like I was because like the, oh my, ugh, like it was just it was like visceral. I was like I've not reacted yeah. like I was I haven't gagged in a long time. <laughs> I was just mm. like <laughs> eyes oh, wide yeah. for the whole. Sh- no, uh, they play that it whole so episode. well. Jane Lynch is fucking a genius. She I is the best, a hundred percent. Her and um, Kurt's dad are the two best. In my opinion, oh, yeah, I really think, like Kurt. I can't fan. remember his name though. That guy, Bert. Mm. Is it Bert? Yeah. Fuck off, Kurt and Bert. <laughs> yeah. The scene that Bert. like <laughs> the scene that always like stuck in my memory is when he comes out to his dad, and his mm. dad's like, "I've known like since you were a kid." I think that's such a beautiful scene. Yeah, it was good. It oh, was actually, good that reminds me. One of my other favorite bits was. Um, <laughs> When Mercedes sings that, like, I yeah. threw my brick in your car or whatever it was. And well. she's like, he's not gay. And everyone's like, Mercedes, man, you've got eyeballs in your head or yeah. something. Like, oh my God. That's, that episode is incredible. Mm. It's incredible. Because then he's like, Mercedes, I'm gay. And I was like, oh, the sheer shock, the horror. <laughs> Oh my god! How did she yeah. know? She's actually pretty awful in that episode. Like, she's, mm. she's a bit of a bitch. She she was she was a total knobhead. But like, like smashes it's his car just because she doesn't believe that he's gay mm. and thinks that he's in he love with Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> they did her dirty. Oh, that was... she was one of the best ones, really. When it came oh, to that like, was one yeah. of the funniest the things. Oh, what Mercedes? Yeah. Yeah, she yeah, actually she is, is the best one. Like. <laughs> In my opinion, I think um, as much as I do think Rachel was good, uh, they always brought Rachel out to be like, "This one's the like the she, one." She she was a bit whiny, in my opinion. Whereas mm, Mercedes actually had a theater. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like Mercedes actually had like bit just like edge. a yeah like a genuinely organic good voice in terms of like. Yeah, she I think she's actually try. underutilized in terms of like the vocal performance. Um, yeah, throughout the season, and she even says like, "I'm underutilized in terms of the vocal performance in the season." 
and um legit but but also when she was there and like she was singing i thought they always give her like this like sort of really huge like gospel edge to her i'm like i would rather her not come out at the end of a song and be like and now i'm gonna sing the last note and it's gonna be I'm like okay like do something else yeah that's kind of what they do with rachel though and i don't like that either because she's always like she was like fucking warbling all the time she's mm-hmm. like <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is so annoying. Off. Yeah, I know, but it got to the point where it like it stopped being impressive the first two times. Now I'm just like, oh, here we fucking go again. She's warbling. She's she's mm-hmm. really good. Did you not know she's the best yeah, in she's the Glee the best club? One. <laughs> I'm like, fucking, hell, she's not even the right. best in the Glee club. Fuck off. I do like a lot of the song choices that they yeah, use. They're, they're I think good. they use like a really good collection of like. There are some terrible A ones lot of in big there, songs there. from the time, but also just kind of like big, well known songs mm-hmm. throughout the decades. I think it's a lot of fun. I remember the bit where they finally get into the finals of the regionals or whatever. Sectionals. And, and uh, well, whatever. And vocal adrenaline start doing Bohemian Rhapsody, and Chris goes, oh, fuck off. And I was like, <laughs> I was yeah, like, okay. Bohemian Rhapsody while Quinn's giving birth. That was that a horrible thing. I hated that. Horrendous. I hated that. I was like, on my. I was like, that genuinely annoyed me. Mm. Like, I was, that, I, that, 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 I did, they didn't need to do that. That when she was like screaming and like saying the lyrics yeah. to the song while they were performing it, and she was giving birth and saying the lyrics to Bohemian Rhapsody, I was like, "Why? Why you didn't need to do this? This I is so horrible. Funny. It's, I hated it's horrible. it. I I was sitting on this very chair that Max is sitting on, and I was just like." Not quite cringing, but like, um, I kind of just wanted to crawl out of my own skin because I was like so uncomfortable. Like, it was so like. Yeah. I felt like also she was pregnant for about five years. <laughs> yeah, I kept saying, oh my God, when is oh, she going well, to give yeah. birth to this kid? She's like, not fucking done yet. Like, come, it's just been going on for ages. But that's how, that's how the whole season kind of felt for me. I was yeah. like, is it. Yeah, like, it's been a year. I'm like, no, it fucking hasn't. It's been nine months, apparently. It's like, no, we're. No, it hasn't. You can't show me all of this in 22 episodes and be like, that's nine months. Also, yeah, how could it, it be a whole year if Quinn hasn't given birth until the last episode? Literally. And, and the, I <laughs> swear to God, in like, that last episode, works? when they're like so sad that uh, like, they've, they've been stitched up for the regionals or sectionals or whatever, Yeah. Quinn's like, I'm, I'm one month away. And then, and then she like gives birth like, like the next week. <laughs> what the fuck? What, was she a month away or what? Like, well, to be fair, obviously you can't. Yeah, you can't give birth early, but like, yeah. no, why have it? It's very early, though. Yeah, like why have it as a as like a? It's not because it's not even a throwaway line at that point because she actually makes like a big deal about the fact that she has a bit of time left because she needs to move out and move in with Mercedes and all this other shit. And then yeah, like the next episode, which is probably like yeah, the next week, she's yeah. like, oh, um, hi, mom, uh, my water is broken. She probably had this baby now. I'm like, oh, okay. Why does she sound like Kermit? <laughs> Did she get birth to? <laughs> yeah, it's how I cope with with uh, <coughs> with this show. She was good though. I do like that character. And um, I actually just, quite well, like the her. fuckery she goes through and like yeah. <laughs> drags thin through the thin through the mud. Um. Even though, like, he was kind of a cunt. Uh, he did kind to, of deserve a lot of things. Bit, that to but him, like, to the, <laughs> he was not to the extent that he had it. Idiot but. to believe that he could have impregnated her. Because she told him that jacuzzi. he came in a jacuzzi and it went into <laughs> her. <laughs> oh god! To be fair, I was like, I was like, Nobody surely is not that stupid. But again, you know, these are kids; they believe whatever the fuck. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, you just. I, I was just like, oh man, like they're doing Glee Club, but they clearly need to go to like Sex Ed because none of them know what the fuck is going on. Obviously, I think, I think something I also really enjoy about the show is. That all the characters do have like really, really strong personalities. Mm-hmm. There's no one that's like I feel like a throwaway character. Really, I think everyone's like very distinct. Everyone like, I feel like they're they, all they, very they different. They nerfed about two members of the Glee Club when they could have made yeah you know, Mike Chang and the black guy. Oh yeah, characters. I mean, them. They're not really characters at all. They're just <laughs> no. like background people. I <laughs> when, I- when what was it like? <laughs> Tina. Uh, she was like supposed to dance with Artie in that one episode but he can't dance because he's in a wheelchair I don't know why she ever bothered to like try um <laughs> she's like fine you, you, can, you can sing it and I'll dance and then <clears throat> Will's like who's your partner Tina she's like 
Mike Chang, and he like comes up, he like jumps up, he's like, ah! he's like always ready to fucking yeah. dance. <laughs> this that's, guy, that's I need a whole fucking character. spin-off show about fucking Mike Chang. That is he actually, was the G. He was, the, he was one the, of the best ones. I hope he that. has more like character progression as it goes yeah. on. I think he said about one line in this whole season. I've yeah. never heard him really speak to. The only thing that ever really happens is like, oh, you know that bit where um I've forgotten the guy, uh, Ken or whatever his name is. He's like, you have to choose between football and the glee oh, club yeah, yeah. and then um obviously all the boys start coming in but who comes in first the guy that has no name and then mike chang and everyone's like mm. hugging them like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i was like you don't even know oh, who they thank are. god mike chang and the black guy showed up it's like who the fuck are these guys <laughs> and i was like what the fuck because they was like, because you never hear them talk about each other like in the show, but like the second they come to yeah. practice, Jesus they're Christ. the best people yeah. ever. And they're not even in like every episode; they're just there when it's convenient. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. really we need Mike Chang for this doing some sexy fucking moves. Oh man, it's good for. so good. Don't give him any lines; he'll speak through the medium of dance. That is true. That and he so did. He but at least Mike himself. Chang has a name. The other guy, what the fuck is his name? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know Mike his name. Mike Chang's friend. Yeah, <laughs> he's just that <laughs> Were they guy. even friends? I don't know. They just didn't speak. I thought, yeah, like, well, he must be a dancer, right? Because I've never heard him say mm-hmm. Like, but I'm pretty sure they're just there for, like, plot convenience. Like, they're just mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, we need more We need more bodies in the Glee Club to make read sectionals or whatever. And they're like, oh, we've got these two guys here that, like, never speak. <laughs> <laughs> we can bring them. Like, bring when them they... In. When they brought um, what's his name in when Finn quit? Um, that guy who's like Rachel, I really want to have your panties. Yeah, the guy with what? the curly hair from Vocal Adrenaline. No, no like the um, really like nerdy sort of the guy. The one who publishes oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hate name. him. Yeah, I hate him. <laughs> I just like I just I just find his like he's also there for pop convenience, really, isn't he? Because he's like no, I think he's kind of there. It's like a. Just a punching bag for joke. Yeah. What jokes? It's, it's not even funny. The jokes they tell about yeah, him aren't no, even he's funny. He's like some of the worst like bits of the show. I think he is. I was. Just... Do you like the episode where Tina gets told off for being a goth, <laughs> yeah. and then the principal's like, "You, you can't be a you vampire. You can't be a goth." <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like this is fucking unbelievable. How fucking dare you say this? And she's like, "You have to not be goth," and then, like she just goes around not being goth anymore. I'm like, this is disgusting. This is disgraceful. And it was actually, it turned out the whole point of it was because the principal believed in vampires and seen <laughs> Twilight and he fucking suddenly believed in vampires. Yeah, because I was thinking... <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <She'd been laughs> that a- was the same goddamn episode where, like, uh, Finn calls Kurt's decorations faggy. And I was like, how are the how are all these things like yeah. connected in the same episode? So many like things happen with yeah, each episode. That's You're what like, I mean. It's Jesus, that happened at the same time. This was happening. This is crazy. Yeah, that principal guy is like crazy. <laughs> yeah, he was mad. Yeah, I loved that I episode <laughs> where um Sue gets suspended and then she gets back on because she roofies him and tricks him into thinking they had sex. <laughs> yeah. I actually oh my can- god! I yes. actually can't believe this show. Like you know, like. People, you know, if anyone listens to us here at the Sunday Movie Marathon, they're going to hear this and they're going to think, this show ain't real, man. Like, if you've never seen it, you don't know what you're, what you're in for. Because mm. this, it, it doesn't sound real. It sounds like someone's made up a show and we're, like, yeah. talking it's about so it. so much if, happens, though. As if That's we the just whole, made it like, up. The thing of it is just so much happens. This is the, the, the same true. season where Rachel discovers that she has a mother and it's actually Adina Menzel. Is it actually? Fucking, is that actually her mum? Because the they look adrenaline. related. Like they actually look related. I don't know if they are. There's like in real two, life. Sorry. Like, no, they look, they're white women and they've got brown hair. No, they look. They fucking look identical. They look. They do look exactly kind of similar, like each other. They're mm. not the same. She's the frozen lady, no? Yeah, Adele Dazeem. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> Yeah. No, I thought it was her, but I you thought it's gonna sound really dumb, but I actually thought that she was younger than she would be, so I didn't think it was her. If that makes sense. To be honest, I didn't know it was her till you just said it. Mm-hmm. No, I saw her I name. I saw I her name come her. up, and I was like, "Oh, that must yeah, be her." Yeah, I did see name. her name come up. I was like, "Adina Menzel's in this." <laughs> yeah, and I thought, Crazy. "Oh, there I she thought, is." Yeah, I thought she was younger, so she would have been too young to be on Glee, but obviously not. But I no. thought, I just thought that's how old. I don't know. I just thought that she wasn't the age that she was, basically. That was such a fucking weird one, though. Like, her plan was to, like, get this guy who was in vocal adrenaline for, like, being Glee Club. Who was also then... in Frozen. Jonathan Groff, I think his name is. No, I don't think the... he was. 
That guy who plays the snowman. No, he? that's um. No, that's Josh oh Gad. no, he plays yeah, um, what's Josh his Gad. name? The um, Christoph. Yeah, Christoph. Does he? Right, he is in it. But yeah, her whole plan <laughs> was so fucking weird. Like box. instead of just like saying, "Hey, Rachel, I'm your mother," she had to like go through. She had to like get like a double agent to basically uh, fall in love with Rachel. Yeah, and then like give her a tape of her of her is? mother singing, and then she'd be like, "Oh, my mother was a great vocalist." And then she'd be like, oh, I know that voice. It's Adina Menzel from Vocally. <laughs> That's the whole conceit of it. Like, oh, what yeah, a I weird do, plan. I actually do love that bit where like, she just sees her one day and she's like, to be fair, they do look alike. So if that hmm. was me, I would have been like, she looks like my mum. Therefore, a, she's got to be my mum. Because she just goes down and goes, hey, I'm Rachel Berry and I'm your daughter. And she's like, Oh my yeah, god! She, Even knows she knows that. Who she knows is. that. Yeah, you know who the fuck she <laughs> Why is. Why did you look but so surprised? I would be so fucking mad. I'm like, you got like this guy from uh, to like fall uh, to make me fall in love with him, and then like oh, that yeah. all this bullshit happened because of it. That's horrendous. Yeah. You, what the fuck? You can't do that. But it's alright because she never finds out that side. <laughs> That's true. But like, there's also like surely that- she could have inferred it. Thought she yeah. was supposed to be smart. Nah, she's not that smart. I also like the fact that she like kind of doesn't really want a relationship with Rachel because she's like a teenager. And then right at the end of the show, it looks like she uh, show the uh, season. She basically has adopted Quinn's baby, and I'm like, yeah. oh, brilliant. Okay, we we'll get Poor a new Rachel. one. Yeah, yeah. Like fuck Rachel, I guess. No, because they sang Poker Face together. That was fucking <laughs> right. Imagine oh. that. She's like, I really want to sing just one song with you, and out of all the songs they picked. Poker face, and I thought, what the? Not fuck? even like poker face as it is, but like this, like sad, melancholic, like it takes double the time poker face takes normally because they slow it down by. A, and also, by 50%. the lyrics are like yeah. so inappropriate. Like, like her mum singing like bluffing with my Murphy, and yeah. I'm like, this oh. is weird. Like, you don't even know this woman. Like, she. <laughs> like this, this is not the right song to be playing. No. You, you had to do it in the one that they did, like Lady Gaga. Yeah, like what? yeah, for sure. You could yeah. have just picked another song entirely, or I'm another sure there artist. I'm Lady Gaga songs that could have worked probably better than that. just don't. Yeah, I thought even Paparazzi would have been better. <laughs> even Paparazzi, yeah, yeah, just do Paparazzi. Anything would have been better. Face. What the fuck? Yeah, that she was... probably had some slow songs at that point as well. So yeah, she yeah. probably did. I can't think of anything. None, of my none head. the zeitgeist. No, you got to give them like, like the big ones, you know. Otherwise, like, oh yeah, this is like a deep cut from Lady Gaga's. The yeah, album. to be fair, all the slow songs I know from her are from like recent times yeah i was gonna yeah. say she would have had everything around that point anyway i don't think they do the madonna episode as well oh, oh that's, that's one one of the best be- not as the best when sue gets her um it was one of the best parts was when sue does her madonna video what the vogue and it's all the yeah, she does vogue <laughs> yeah which is like really good yeah, that was <laughs> and it like ends with like a montage of like a virgin where like, it's like three different couples yeah. like hooking up potentially all losing their virginities <laughs> This is batshit, man. It is nuts. Yeah. It's so nuts. There's also like another episode where like it starts with with like the Sue has like done a, a song of um what what's her face yeah like, physical, let's get physical by yeah. Olivia Newton John. Oh my god, yeah. that was incredible. And they all like laugh at her, but I'm like, weren't like a couple of episodes ago you were all like, yeah, Sue, go Sue for the fucking Madonna one. Yeah. Like, why is this different? And, and then, then it goes viral <laughs> and Olivia Newton-John films a version with her. Insane. I must say, that, that was pretty great. <laughs> it's crazy. What the fuck? She was clearly not doing anything. She shows up in two episodes. She's like a judge at the end. Yeah, like that's... What was that woman who comes in and she does the play with them and she's like, well, I'm an alcoholic, love me. I, I hate that. What's no. her name? She's annoying. I... I didn't hate her as a character. The one who, like, just... gives all the students drugs. Yeah. yeah. I just thought... What the fuck? Yeah, she, like, gives them, like... <clears throat> what? No, yeah, that's, that's gives... what... Um, no, I thought, that's no, Terry that's... does that. No, Terry, Terry gives does her... that. Terry gives uh, yeah, the students yeah, yeah, drugs. Sorry. She, like, she poses gives them as a nurse. and makes them yeah. steal yeah. Yeah. shit. Terry poses... As... Will's wife poses <laughs> as a nurse. <laughs> Will's wife. And then goes and works at the school and gives the kids drugs. I'm like, yeah. uh, what do you... <laughs> oh, and then... Why the fuck is she allowed to do this? And then... The, like Will brings in another woman who like he used to have a crush on at school, and then she <laughs> comes along and like gives the students alcohol and like insinuates yeah. that she'd fuck some of them. Oh, and then let, yeah, lets them steal and stuff, and like and then Terry like lets this poor man go to jail or whatever for like getting counter. What's it over the counter? Like it's decongestant. Yeah, decongestant, mm-hmm. and was like, don't buy them all at once. <laughs> 
That's what I mean. That's why this show is like so much better yeah. than this all those other so like boring fun. ones yeah. or like they're, they're the same sort of conceit. But at least it's entertaining. They're just like it's so heightened and weird. Yeah, I've I've been never, there, like, I was never, I was never really bored during during Lee. I don't think it very much feels like they take like the premise of like just a high school like comedy drama, and they're like, how can we like Amplify this. make this so batshit insane? Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of those have like very crazy, like ridiculous, like stories and shit. But I feel like they were just like, how can we like really like amplify that and do that? Yeah, it's a bit like I don't even, I can't even think of a show that's even similar though. Like that came out like before then, or you know, like after then, you have shows like Riverdale and shit like that Mm. that are just batshit insane. But this was like what felt like the OG OG satirical batshit insane but yeah. i can't think of anything that came up before and that was like this like, like high no, well, school, school. Uni. Degrassi. Oh, yeah. i can't what think of anything that? it was like a big like high school teen drama that was around for like decades i think like basically a soap opera I yeah think. i was gonna say mm. it glee is basically what um i love in uh really bad tv like i love soaps because i just can't Mm. Yeah, not I mean, that this is bad as, yeah. TV, but well, you know as what much I mean? as we like, say like it's like a satire, they know what they're doing. It's a satire. There are some obvious moments where it's like you don't you don't really get what you're doing here, like why it's some of it as is, bad as it is. Some of it is, is, yeah. some of it is really is bad. Messy. Yeah, but I mean, I'm but I does still it. I didn't ever really mind because it just lent to the, the overall tone of the yeah. show. Yeah, I don't like it. Like, even the bad everywhere. stuff was like great. It's such a strange <laughs> balancing of different tones as well. Where it's like, yo, I was getting that sort of horror vibe in the first episode. <laughs> you, you get like these these weird adult themes, or like just really serious stuff. And you know, with, with the school shooting episode coming up uh, in a later season, it clearly just escalates from here. Um, but then you do get those more like sort of typical high school comedy type of episodes, which is mostly just filler. I don't really mind it. You know, you got Neil Patrick Harris coming in in one episode. That's very oh, yeah. fillery. You do, you do need a bit of a reprieve yeah. though, because it's so insane that like you need a minute to like take it all in and breathe. You're like, okay, I need one episode where yeah, Neil Patrick Harris comes in and he's like, I want to be the star of the show, and then we're like, that was a great oh, episode. Yeah, what it, the fuck that, was yeah. happening there? <laughs> He just comes in, he's so mean, he's like, oh, I really wanted to be in the plays, Will. Please let me be in the plays. You always like, so what much the fuck better than me, happening? Will. They sing a song like on the jukebox in like a bar, and that was like the first time I realised, like, oh man, Will has like no friends. Yeah. This is like his only friend. Thank God they're friends now. But then he just like double crosses <laughs> yeah, him, like- and that's the end of that. That episode was directed by Joss Whedon as well. Oh, wow. Ooh. Joss Whedon, he's the uh, director of... um. Avengers. He also um, <laughs> created Buffy the Vampire Slayer in oh Firefly. God. Oh my mm. god, Firefly! What a hero! Yeah. an actual Director hero. of Justice League. Yeah, and apparently a piece of shit, but <laughs> that's neither here well, nor there. You could say that about a lot of directors. Good, indeed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'll, of, leave, um, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, great quote from episode eighteen, where um, <laughs> episode. 18. Yeah, of course, of course, we all remember episode eighteen. Um, but it's where uh, Sue was talking to Kurt, and she says, uh, "So you like show tunes? Doesn't mean you're gay. It just means you're awful." <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> she has some of the best fucking lines. She did, didn't she? I just honestly, that cat one actually, like, I think about it sometimes. I just genuinely <laughs> think about it because it. I said to Krista, it gave the same energy as when um. You know, in Last Exit to Springfield, where Homer's like, I'm going to go into work tomorrow and punch Lenny in the back of the head. And I was like, that gives the same energy as I'm going to get you a kitten. You're going to fall in love with that kitten. And then one day I'm going to come into your house and punch you in the face. That's (laughs) such a good line. I even like, I knew of that line already and I didn't know it was from this. I was just like, yeah, that's from this, I guess. I just wasn't expecting oh, her to be like, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah, that <I'm>... really kill <laughs> me. <laughs> like, you know, Chris does that, that it can only be described as like a chortle of happiness. <laughs> I love when Chris brings up the chortle of happiness because then I'm like, yeah. I like laugh by default because I'm like, he's having such a good time. It is such a good time. <laughs> the whole way through, it's like really good, even when it's like not the best. It's like, I'm never like lamenting That's having what I mean, to watch yeah, it. I'm never like... Oh. I was never no. like, all right, it's Glee time. I've got yeah. to watch Glee. I'm like, 
can go to watch Glee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we were like. We were like, Glee. Yeah, when Darcy went off to Glastonbury, I had to go a whole week without watching it. And every day I was like, <laughs> I really want to watch Glee. <laughs> I was too yeah. I was too busy to miss Glee, but I remember coming back and going, Oh my god, I get to watch Glee yeah. when I come back. I actually got like quite emotional during the last episode, like during yeah. the last scene. I didn't oh, realise that at that point I was like I didn't realise right, how no, invested actually, no, I was no, in no, this we need, show. no, we need to address this right here, right now. Chris has just jogged my memory. He actually point blank started crying <laughs> and he said, Fuck this show. <laughs> and I turned around and I said why the fuck it are got you crying? You. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that bit was really sad. When, what was it? I was like, it was <laughs> when Kurt <laughs> said that he never really had a dad until uh, well. Because his what? dad died, when, uh, well, Finn's dad died when he was really young. So he was like, oh, I never really had a dad growing up, but now I've got Will in the Glee club, yeah. basically. Um. And then I did, the thing is, I didn't even notice anything until I think it was like the episode had ended when I had noticed. Because he's like, no, it was still going, you know. Yeah. I really loved when they like they lost at the sectionals and then they thought it was like all over, so they sing a song for Will, and he's like sat there crying because they, they and they go through and like each of them get a line, even like Mike Chang and the black guy get a line. And they're like, yeah. oh, I joined Glee because of this, or like, yeah, I was, that the was loser a before Glee. Was, like, yeah. Yeah. Mark State. <laughs> so what? good because that's when he was like, I didn't have a a father before yeah. Glee or something. That just reminded me of something else, but oh no, no, it's gone. It's gone from my brain. I was just thinking about another like. Oh, what was the name of that other. <coughs> the other group that had a really terrible name? Vocal Adrenaline? No, the other one. No, I don't fucking know. They had a really, really. Oral or something? Oral. Yeah, it was like. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> what was the name? If I look up You're Oral look now, I'm gonna, hell. there's going to be some sort of um, backlash yeah. on my phone. I'll get it raided. I also by really the like the fact that like Sue voted for. The new directions. Yeah. Says, she was like, I voted for who I thought should have won. And she voted for them. And yeah. she realized in like the humdrum of the celebrity life that she was more equipped to deal with or like more <laughs> equipped to relate to the people in Glee than she was who she thought she would be related to. But she actually thought, well, actually, I belong. They were all like, this is like grand arc of the. The season where I think they were more alluding to like uh, circumstances of where you, like you live and like they all lived in Ohio and mm. most of the time they were like well none of them are actually gonna make it or do all these great things because they live in Ohio and basically the system's rigged against them in that kind of way um, but the fact that they're all there and doing Glee is what makes it count in like the whole conceit of it it's it, like that they they are all there and they're like their own family yeah, they it's were really also sweet. called Oral Intensity. <laughs> oral Intensity, yeah. <laughs> oh, We've man. all been there. And I remember when um they were like, ah, oh, the the runners up are Oral Intensity, and I was like pissing myself. I was like, that's a great name. In and episode twenty one, they do a a funk. This this is the funk episode. Was that uh, yeah, that late funk. on? Yeah, yeah, I thought that right was right the end. Right the end. That. They oh, do yeah. a performance, a funk performance for Vocal Adrenaline to show them that they can do funk. And yes. vocal adrenaline have never done funk before and I fucking love the line where the guy says um, we've never been able to pull off a funk number and the girl says that's because we're soulless automatons <laughs> <laughs> I did love that bit because they mentioned it earlier in the episode basically but it was funny to like actually watch someone from the yeah. club actually say it and it was like oh wow oh god that was the same fucking episode where like, Finn and Park have to get jobs and they've st- they start working with Terry for some fucking yeah. reason like this is the only oh, yeah. store in the entirety of Ohio that people can work at, and as soon as they start working there, she like tries to bounce on them. <laughs> yeah, she's like thirsting over like Finn. Finn. It's really crazy. And then they start doing that, uh, that like oh, they do that song, <laughs> that yeah. loser by Beck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that was such sick a good song. Great song. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> That's the same episode where um, Will's trying to seduce Sue as well. No! I don't know. It could be. Yeah, it I hate is, it. Yeah. No, don't stop it. Stop Crazy it. Crazy episode. Stop so it. That's one is what, why it was one of my favourites. Stop it. it. It's so unhinged, so crazy. The f- thing is, I don't even like... Like, the episode's great, but, like, the, just watching visceral scenes between Sue and Will is just like... Ooh, don't want to be a part of it anymore. Don't even want to know. Don't even don't hope to never watch that episode ever again. No, it's good stuff. Yeah, it is that, good stuff. What was that? Um, there was like a review on it or something on uh whatever that. Serialized. Yeah. What was it? Where it was like 
um, where was going at the beginning, the middle, and the end of my suicide note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I give Will a lot of shit, but he is pretty much like the forerunner of that show, isn't he? Mm. I feel like Glee is pretty much the Will Schuster show. Yeah, kind of. He's pretty annoying, but oh, I, I will give him his credit where it's due. I love when he gets like intense or like he shouts at people. <laughs> like, <laughs> Especially that argument with Terry when he finds out that um, she's been lying to him. That um, was actually like, like, now I like key, him. I quite like this guy, actually. Low key, right. that was an Oscar worthy uh, performance, in my opinion. That was terrifying. I was actually scared of Will. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, you, ju- you could just like throw, throw things at him and he wouldn't say boo yeah. to a goose. But he was terrifying. I didn't I actually didn't like Artie as a character, <laughs> the guy in the wheelchair. Oh, Artie. Oh, no, I didn't prick. really um, either. I, I agree. I thought he was a bit of an arsehole. I don't know. I've. I do. I didn't really have strong feelings here or there for him. Just every time you would like, like I'm so sad because I'm disabled and I have no legs. I'm like, oh, I mean, shut, just... shut up, man. And oh, like he'll like he's supposed to be in like a relationship with Tina, or like they really like he was each a bit other. Of a dick to Tina, but he to be is fair. such a dick to her. Yeah. He's like, you know, um, I thought this was like a like they were playing it for, like jokes, but I think he actually meant it when he like told her, you know, uh, if we start dating. You're going to have to lose the goth look. I don't like the emo look. I'm like, you are an idiot. Why is everyone trying to stop her from being a goth? Yeah. This is, you have no idea. that It's so dumb. Like, why are you attracted to her in the first place? Like, that's her whole fucking look. If you don't want her to be a goth. Like why, why the hell? Like her, yeah. yeah. And like, one of their very first, like, conversations where they're like, kind of flirting a little bit and he just basically says, my penis still works. Yeah. Oh that my was God, really that was the cringe. best. Do you know what? It was an awful line, but I kind of, I kind of yeah. loved it because I was like, no one would ever do that. Mm. There's also like that episode where like you find out she's been faking a stutter, and she's he like, I finally feel comfortable no like that. admitting that I've yeah. made it up, and he just like basically destroys you. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like, I, how dare you do that? <laughs> like, what get, the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. I get. I guess for him though, it must come out of a place of. Why would you fake having something like yeah, that? I because can't he fake ca- not yeah, having he, legs. Yeah. I, get I, I, I get it. I do get what where he's coming from. But he was really, he was really a dick to her, yeah. like a lot of the time for like no good. I feel like reason. having a stutter is such like a small thing compared to uh-huh. not being able to walk. Like if she was pretending to be disabled, <laughs> then maybe <laughs> yeah, I understand why he gets so angry. But she wasn't. Yeah, she no, was just yeah. pretending to have like this small thing. If she was in a wheelchair, also, and she was like. Actually, and then she just stood up. <laughs> I wouldn't even put it past this show, to be honest. I re- do you know what I was? That's why. <gasps> that's what I want. Like the, the the next season to do or something. He just like gets what, up, miraculously yeah. starts walking. Do he you gets know in what? another I... accident and miraculously <laughs> gains his legs. No, don't, that's, his exactly, that's exactly what will happen. That is exactly what will happen. That is exactly what will happen. Or they'll be like, oh, remember that uh, special. Um, remedy that doctors are working on they've asked me to be the guinea pig and watch this and he just gets up out of the chair and just starts running he actually just starts running like <laughs> fuck off i love the scene where they're trying to tap dance together and Artie like falls over and he's just like lying on the floor he's just, like tina says oh i'll help you up and he says no just leave me here I'm, like <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and she does. She just like leaves him on the fucking floor. <laughs> no, I'm no, like, but what she the g- fuck? No, but the thing is, she's like, can I at least move your chair? And then just before she goes, she just wheels the chair yeah. over as if that's gonna. Yeah, <laughs> and you, he like has a go at her. He's like, you. He's like, you push me. You just push me uh, to do this, and I wasn't ready. I'm like, dude, you did it. <laughs> it was your fault. You yeah, didn't like, have to do it if you didn't want to. It's like it's like it's like he forgets that like he too is like a sentient being that has you know thoughts and his own you know what mm-hmm. i mean like he is his own mind like he could have just said no tina don't hoist me out of this fucking yeah. chair please i would rather not like i mean i do understand there's like there's like a small element of i think tina does take it a bit too far and trying to give him this false hope of like getting a cure or whatever but like i think he ran of it a little bit as well being like oh yeah i can definitely do it i can do it i can do it and then being like i can't believe mm. this tina i can't believe you would ever entertain <clears throat> these ideas that i've got like what yeah she like went really about? off of her own back and did like a bunch of research for him yeah like proper wet- you basically threw it in her face yeah he he was a bit of a dick to be fair but like Worst i know character 
Yeah, I never, definitely. I never like particularly like hated him or anything. But I do remember when I first watched it, I thought, "Why? Mm-hmm. Why are you like that?" Yeah, there was an episode where Puck shaved his head, and then everybody thought he sucked because he <laughs> shaved his head. Yeah, that was weird. Right. I think the, that, that the, uh, the amount of hair he's had to shave off for people to think he's like an idiot and, and like a um, unpopular now. It's like so minuscule. In it, he <laughs> just like shaved like... off a mohawk, which he is like sh- he had a landing know, like an strip. Inch up. Yeah, yeah, an inch up from his head. And everyone's like, you're, you're a fool. You're, you're unpopular now. And they start chucking yeah. him into the bins. <laughs> what the fuck? My it's so fucking funny. Uh, he like gets out of the bin and he sees Mercedes. And he's like, wait a minute. I don't need to be a cheerleader. I just need to date one. Get ready, black girl from Glee Club, whose name I can't remember right now. <laughs> the puckster is about to make you his. <laughs> so good. Did you quote that? Yeah, that so good. That is fucking minging. I think like Puck's like, he's a character who is like basically a terrible person, but you kind of, love to hate him in a way yeah. he's really entertaining to watch even though he like says and does really like reprehensible shit yeah like I find yeah. it really difficult to watch him as a character because I keep bringing in his rest in peace dude his like uh, like his story into Not it every sure time rest in peace is the <laughs> no, right but, thing to say no I'm just trying to be uh, his story. somewhat respect- respectful I suppose you don't know he he um he <laughs> Ah, no, he right. got Quinn pregnant. The actor, oh, no, what, the, the actor. yeah, no, the actual actor, yeah. Do you know about him? No. Oh, oh, you're gonna love, fucking love this one, right? So he he's one of the uh, three like cast members of Glee that died. Oh shit! Who but, were the others? Um, Finn and what? Mas- who was the other one? Santana. Yeah. Oh How my do you god. not know about no, this? No, I didn't know that yeah, at all. Finn oh my god. Died, no, they, like... they died in real life, by the way, but I've forgotten their names, so I'm yeah, like. Yeah, act- Corey Monteith, the actor yeah. of Finn, died Ma- like um... three seasons in. Yeah. No, four. Fucking four. hell. No, yeah. I think it was like the end of season three, and there's an episode in season four. Where I thought it was in season funeral. five. No, because they made oh a. God. You said they only made one more season out of it, so did it not happen uh, in season no, five? Maybe, yeah. But yeah, Bloody he, he anyway, died yeah. of a heroin overdose. Santana died because she was. She got drowned. No, it was she, only what? a few years ago. She drowned yeah, trying like to two save or three her son. Years ago. Oh yeah, God. she had a young son who like yeah. fell into the water, and then she went out to save him. And yeah, and then the actor of Puck was found with child porn and killed himself in prison. Holy fucking <laughs> shit! No, like fuck it. Yeah, like yeah. And it's the fuck thing is, absolute I, fuck. I couldn't, I couldn't watch his character without going. Like, you know, he, yeah, he'd do all these, like, reprehensible things and he'd, like, talk to all, like, these teenagers and I was like, yeah, I bet you fucking be a little pedo. And I couldn't stop doing it. I kept doing it the whole time I was watching him. Um, Naya Rivera is who yeah. played Santana. Yeah. Um, who played Puck? Uh, Mark Sailing, is that his name? So. It's definitely Mark something. Britney Spears, what the fuck? Britney Spears? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently she's in this. Uh, yeah, it's definitely Mark something. I don't know, I can't find him. He does have a Wikipedia, because I remember getting too close into the Glee goon hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, like, looking it all up. Yeah, Mark Salling. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah, That's legit. What, oh it was, God. It's mad. Yeah, the Glee car. Supposedly, <laughs> like, <laughs> is, uh, there's actually, the, um, I really want to watch a documentary about it on, um, was it Discovery Plus that made one? I can't remember I what it was so. called. <clears throat> the Glee curse? Uh, no, it's... The price of Glee. The, yeah. <laughs> My word. Yes, yeah, so it's like a whole documentary about like people like blaming Lee and Michelle for like everything that happened to like Corey Monteith and all yeah, that kind of shit. Yeah, apparently it's really bad, like yeah. really biased, obviously. Like they're just like jumping to conclusions. It's like oh. basically like a conspiracy yeah, theory documentary. Because like someone in the Glee cast got him back onto heroin and that's why he died and all this other kind of stuff. Mm. So it's mad. But um, oh I do want to watch it at some point, but I don't know if Chris wants to watch it with me. So I feel like it might be something I watch by myself. I don't know, but. I want to watch Glee the concert movie. Glee the sorry? concert movie. Yeah. So Ooh. after the first, I think after the second season, sorry, the like Glee cast toured and they made a concert movie out of one of the live shows. Interesting. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can all watch it. Yeah. Was the when when was this like twenty eleven oh. or something? Oh okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, twenty eleven. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll bite. <laughs> oh, why not? Is that, Doing if, that, does that straight count, after this? Does that count as a movie? Can we like pick it for the pod? Does it count? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, do it if you Our want. Our recommendations are Glee, the concert, the music, whatever yeah. the fuck it was meant. <laughs> we could uh, wrap it up. Yeah, it's getting on. Oh, yeah. We've probably got like a fuck ton to say about it, but this whatever. This is the thing. I bet this, po- this I told you this episode was going to be super long. I bet it's like three hours or something yeah, ridiculous. Like tea. Oh, I like it probably the, um, could be for now. <laughs> I like the allusion to Santana and Britney 
been a couple yeah. throughout the season. There's that line um, where Santana says, sex is not dating. Pretty says, if it was, then Santana and I would be dating. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> don't remember that. I think they were a couple like, later on. Well, one, think, one of them does so, yeah. come out, but I don't know if they become a couple. Mm. Isn't it? I think, no, Santana comes out, right? Or, I don't know. Yeah. One also, of them definitely comes there's out. There's that point where remember. they both go on a date with Finn. Yeah, he's like basically third wheel. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. Yeah, and I think as much as like we shit on like Rachel being like the best singer, I do think she was really good. But like also in episode thirteen, she does rain on my parade, and I thought that was so fucking good. Yeah, that yeah, was that really whole good. solo was just sick. Yeah, as that hell. was great. To be fair, like I'll I'll give her a dues. It's not that she's not impressive. I just think that it just stops being like a uh, novelty, right? Like, yeah. like it stops being. You Whoa. are hit with it at first. You're like fucking. Yeah, geez, exactly. What? And now you're like, oh, and okay. she's like, she has like one thing that she can do. Yeah, yeah. like like it's really like it's really good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it just stops being impressive pretty quickly and and becomes more like yeah, this is the standard now. You're just good you you know what you are you are great but yeah. i'm not impressed anymore because I've, <laughs> I've heard enough you like the scene uh in one of the episodes where quinn invites finn over to see her parents oh, and well, then he starts singing he breaks out a boom box is. and he starts <laughs> singing you're having my baby and he repeats that line oh, over that and horrible. over again <laughs> well, this is the worst way it was, to break it. it was also very like, I know it was supposed to be like on the nose, but it felt almost like two on the nose because he's like, oh, I want to sing this song for you guys. And it's like, oh, what could this mean? <laughs> what could this be about then? <laughs> and Quinn's just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> Finn, mm. why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this show's mad goofy. I love it. <laughs> I love it's it. mad goofy, oh, baby. Mad goofy. Yeah. All right. We can, we can rate it. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll be here forever. Okay, yeah, yeah. What was that guy's name? Was it Mike Chang? Yeah. Should we call Mike yeah. Chang? Right out of Mike Chang. Thanks, Mike. Is he dead? <laughs> no, I don't I hope think not. so. I hope none of the others are dead. No, he's a morsel. Mike Chang. Harry Shum Jr. <clears throat> is he still alive, please? Yes, he is. He's 41 years of age. Hell yeah. No, good for him. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean good, good for, for him? Good for 41. Uh, good for you still <laughs> aging in the world. Yeah. Thanks, Mike Chang. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, cannot wait to carry it on because it's such a, such a good time. Like, very easy to watch show. Like, mm. just, yeah, just a lot of fun. I give it eight Mike Changs out of ten. Yep. Uh, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm very pleasantly surprised by it. Um, also, one thing we didn't mention uh, was that of, of the pantheon of really great voices, I thought Chris Colfer as Kurt Hummel was like oh, one yeah, of the he was best really good. in terms of like vocal ability. He's incredible. He's got such a beautiful little <clears throat> high pitched voice on him. Yeah. So he something like went up and he was like, "I can do exactly what Rachel can do," and I'm like, "Yeah, he can actually, and he's better. He like, is yeah. better. He has like a like an emotional emotionality. If that's what." That it goes with like his voice that I don't think Rachel has in hers so much, but he like can do different things with his voice because I think she has more of a one track type of voice. Mm, I get that. Same with like the Mercedes character as well, where I, I, I would hope if I carry on in this show, she would she have a bit more utilized for something. Yeah. I felt a bit like that with Kurt though, to be honest, because I was like, I remember he doing Defiant because I used to have like um like songs on my MP3 player, my little iPod, and I was like, I like his version of. Flying gravity, actually, because I had it on my iPod. Yeah. Um. Cool. Uh. <clears throat> yeah. Eight. Uh. Mike Chang's out of ten. Thanks, Mike. I'll be honest. I got into this like uh point, and I forgot that we have to like rate the shows as well because I didn't really like I didn't really have one, so I was just like, oh, I'm just watching it because I'm having a good time now. Mm -hmm. Um. Just go with but, what your heart says. Ah, uh, do you know what my heart is telling me? Kurt is a winner, so therefore I'm gonna give it easy nine Mike Chang's out of ten. Fair enough. Nice. nice. Thanks, Glee. Glee! That's that. <laughs> <clears throat> That's that. We've got the next episode to undertake. Uh, look, uh, like, look, like, Max has two glasses of water and I'm just, uh, I was amazed by it. And then yeah, my voice is really now. wearing out. Like, we do that. How yeah. long have we been going? Like, uh, forever. Two hours, 15 minutes, yeah. roughly. Fair Holy enough. Shit. So, yeah, I'm a bit worn out. But, yeah, we've got another episode to do. 126. Yes. That'll be with you in two weeks' time. We're going to spin a wheel. Is going to tell us exactly what we're going to watch. I have my speaker this time. So uh, might not be able to hear it as well. I like the way he's looking over at his phone right now. Done. We've done it. Well, okay. These are things that we really should proof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't like that face he's pulling. 
Uh, it's come up with Buster Keaton movies. I'm fine with that. And don't really know any, so. I have no idea who that is, so. He's like a, the Charlie Chaplin sort of guy. Can we do something else? Yeah. We, I, I don't really have We get so many, like, people, like, like directors or actors. Like, we're getting another one now. <laughs> What's that, though? See. Ryan Gosling. Do you know what? Should we do it? Um, I yeah, fucking I, love Ryan, I like Gosling. Ryan Gosling. I know exactly yeah, I, I what like Chris is probably going to pick as well, so. I'm, I'm up cool. for Ryan Gosling. I don't even know what I'm going to pick. I think I do. Wait, uh, when yeah. is this one coming? When's the next one coming out? Uh, um, oh, Wait, when now. does it come out? Uh, right. I, I know exactly what you're we've, thinking I'm going to pick. We've now it, hit it, an impasse. This impact. one comes out, this next one, episode 126, comes out, technically it should come out on the 23rd. Right. But I, I wonder if we're doing a Ryan Gosling marathon, if maybe we could push it, the, uh, the release date of the next one, for or back a bit, so that we could talk about Barbie as well. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. So okay. this one might come out a little later, but we'll we're coming at you strong with some Ryan Gosling movies and a review of Barbie and probably Oppenheimer as well. Okay. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna stay to, tuned. Yeah, we're gonna have to segue this somehow because I actually go away like two days after that marathon is mm. meant to happen. The cinema marathon, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll sort it out. We'll sort it out. Stay yeah. tuned. Keep track of that and follow us on the social media so that you know when that episode is out. YouTube, the Sunday Movie Marathon. Wee. Instagram at Sunday Movie Pod. Wee. Twitter at Sunday Movie Pod. Wee. Facebook at Sunday Movie Marathon Wee. and Letterboxd at Sunday MM Capital S Capital MM. Wee. Like, subscribe, rate the podcast Wee. five stars wherever you do that. And do we Wee. have any last words? Thanks, Glee. Wee. Thanks, Glee. We're going to keep watching you because you're one of the good ones. Thanks. Da, 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 Stay tuned da, 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 for our thoughts da, 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 on Glee too. Bye. <laughs>